Hi guys, welcome to the very first lecture of this course and thanks for enrolling in my course. And my name is Fahadish Fark and I'm a web developer and first thing that I want to tell you if you stuck at any point if you have any question so here you have to add the discussion what you need to do you just need to ask a question and you are simply add a question and then I will reply this question or any question if you ask any question hundred times then I will answer that question hundred times now here I am making this course so that's why it look like this there are no students because I'm making this course and you can also message me and I will reply your messages and you can also contact me on the social media and this is your right to ask the question so never hesitate don't blush to add any discussion ask any question if you have a little problem a child problem so then add a discussion I will answer that discussion as soon as possible so the next thing is in this lecture I'm just gonna introduce myself I am just gonna tell you what we are going to learn so first of all I have already know many people that are enrolled in this course they they don't know what is the HTML5 CSS3 so there is a first three sections in that sections I'm gonna teach you the basic HTML and the CSS so here is the HTML I'm gonna teach you how to install the editor and then how to add the images and all the things in the HTML5 and the CSS3 and the HTML and the CSS so here is the all the HTML here is the form and here is the way of adding the audio video in our pages and the div and all the things and then here is the CSS section it contain all the things that we need to create these five web development projects actually it contain more things that we need just for the knowledge and here is the CSS3 the advanced CSS3 properties and here is our first web development projects in this project I'm going to teach this website this is related to the technology or just like agriculture and I will teach you each and everything how to create this slider and content area how to insert these images and all the things how to create this awesome menu and this page and this all the things and then here is the second one in this I will also teach you how to create the second project and then here is the third and then fourth and then fifth so here is the second one third one fourth and the fifth one so I'm again going to repeat this if you stuck at any point so don't lose hope you came here to learn and I came here to teach you this is the place for the people who don't know anything and who know the HTML and the CSS and they want to increase their skills they want to learn more knowledge about the HTML CSS and those people who have already know the HTML and the CSS so they can skip these sections and directly learn these projects and these projects are consist of around about 80 to 70 videos and these HTML and CSS is just covering in the 35 lectures so that's why it is not important for those people who have already know the HTML and the CSS if you are a beginner in the HTML5 and the CSS3 so you have to learn you have to clear your concept you have to learn these lectures again and just add a discussion I will answer it and I will rescue you and from your problem so don't hesitate to add a discussion I will help you as much as I can so see you in the next lecture hi guys welcome to the very first lecture of this course in this lecture I'm gonna uh, give you a little introduction about 
the HTML and the CSS so first of all what is the HTML the HTML is just used for adding the data in our website or it is just used to add the information in our website here you can see that this text images these links all of this data is added into this BBC website by using the HTML here you can also view the HTML of this page by right click on it and here you have to click view page source and here is the HTML is open and it also have the JavaScript and here is the script and this is the HTML here is the HTML this is the jQuery JavaScript and here is this is the HTML and all the things you can view the code of any website and now here I'm gonna tell you these links these images all of these things are inserted by using the HTML you have all of these videos in the websites audios in the websites maps are inserted by using the HTML or you can see, you have already see the forms in the website so all of these the forms are created by using HTML all of this text is inserted using the HTML so here the whole thing is that HTML is just for use to make the page structure and you can also say that HTML is used to make the structure of the site and it is also used to insert the data in the site and the second thing that is the CSS so why we use the CSS without the CSS the HTML is nothing or you can say that the CSS is just used for to style the website all of these colors all of this arrangement and all the things all of these spaces arrangement and this page is look beautiful due to the CSS CSS is just for giving the style to the website to the HTML code to the data so I hope you understand what is the CSS and HTML and from the ne very next video first of all we will download the editor we will create its file and then we will learn the HTML and then we will learn the CSS and after that section after the CSS section we will build the five websites and if you know the basics of the HTML and CSS so you can directly learn the five websites section you can directly jump to that section and you can learn how to code the websites five websites five web development projects but I will recommend you you must need to watch these HTML and CSS lectures to clear your concept so by clearing your concept you can learn these five web development projects clearly so if you have any problem in my course so kindly at the discussion I will help you as much as I can so thank you for watching this video I will see you in the next video hi guys welcome to this lecture in this lecture I am gonna teach you what software you need to code a website you are able to code the HTML CSS or any language in that software here I am gonna write notepad++ the notepad++ is a simple software which we use to code the website or any language we can code the JavaScript PHP MySQL HTML CSS here click on the first link and from the website you are able to download the notepad plus plus freely click on this link and you are able to download this software and here I'm gonna click on this and here save onto my desktop here it's gonna download and now and here is the setup of the notepad plus plus you can right click on it and then you are able to install this software what you need to do just click on it and then you need to click ok and then next 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 you will install this software easily now I have already installed this software I'm gonna click on cancel and now here I'm gonna show you how it look like here is the software notepad plus plus here I'm gonna open the notepad plus plus and here you see that this is just a simple software as compared to the other softwares that are used for web development and now 
here I want to tell you some other things about the Notepad++ and the browsers. Before doing the web development or code any website, you need to update your browser. What is this thing? Uh, many HTML5 and CSS3 properties that are new in the in these languages are not able to run normally in the old versions of the browsers so you need to update your browser click on this icon and then settings and here click on the about and this is this method is for the google chrome and here it is checking the google chrome is up to date so this is a way of updating the google chrome and if you have if you are using the mozilla firefox then click on this icon and options and click on update and you need to check this option and otherwise if you have the old version of the firefox then uninstall it and download the new version of the firefox and if you are using the opera then click on this icon then click on this icon and go to the settings or you can go to the about opera and here you see that it is checking for updates and it is up to date so this is the way you need to update your browser and the second thing is how to save the file how to render the file in the notepad plus plus go to the notepad plus plus and then here I'm gonna write any simple text and then you need to save your file go to the file and then save as and here I'm gonna save this file on desktop and here I'm gonna write the file name is test and then here we need to select the type of the file what is the type of the file the type of the file might be HTML CSS JavaScript or anything here click on this icon and here I'm gonna select the HTML and here is the HTML hypertext markup language file dot HTML and here it adds the dot HTML extension you can save this file and here this file is safe and now I'm gonna view the file here is the file is on the desktop here is the file test here is the file and now this is the file of type HTML if we don't know the type of the file then what is the method uh, then how we know the type of the file right click on it go to properties and here you see that this is the chrome HTML document dot HTML is its type and now when we open this file then it render in the chrome because my default browser is the chrome you can render this file in the firefox in the opera but here this file is execute or render in the chrome in the browser uh, so here i want to tell you another thing the if we want to edit this file or want to edit the code of this file then right click on it and go to the edit with notepad and here the file is open in the notepad and you can add some extra text and here we have to save this text and then what we need to do just reload this file then it's load the new text in the file and here I'm gonna add some other text it is the random text and now let's load it and here it's edit but now here I'm gonna add some text but here I have not saved the file and let's check it reload it and here you see that the new text is not added into into the file because we have not saved the file we have not saved this text we have to save the text and then reload it so it reload the new text that is added into it so now this is the way of saving the file and you can also create the file of type css here i'm going to 
create a file new file and here is the simple text and then save it as the t2 or here is the t2 and then here we need I'm going to save this file with the extension of .css here is the CSS .css and you can also write this extension on your own here I'm going to write this extension .css and then save this file and here is this file so this is the way of how we create the file and how we execute the files in the browser and here is the CSS file this is the CSS file and you can also execute this file in the Firefox here I'm gonna drag this file in the Firefox and here it execute so I hope you understand my lecture if you have any problem so kindly add the discussion on Udemy I will help you as much as I can thank you for watching this video hi guys in this lecture I'm gonna teach you HTML page structure and what is the HTML and tags and some other things like attributes so first of all I'm gonna save this file save as and here I'm gonna write one dot HTML and here save this file and now first of all I'm gonna show you what is the HTML and here I have already opened the CNN website and here you see that there are many pictures on this website and the text so all these pictures all this data audio files and the video files are inserted into this page using HTML or in other words the HTML is used to link the data into our web pages and now I'm gonna tell you about another thing that is the tag tag is the main entity in the HTML so what is the tag here any element in the HTML have the tags and it have the opening tag and the closing tag and now how to write the tag here I'm gonna show you an example first of all place the angle brackets and in between these angle brackets you have to write the name of the tag here I have write the tag name just for the example and then we have to write another angle brackets and then forward slash and after the forward slash we have to write the tag name again this is the closing tag and this is the opening tag almost all the elements in HTML have the tags so what is the purpose of using the tags in HTML if you want to insert a picture in a web page like this so you have to use the image tag and if you want to uh, insert the text you have to use the paragraph tag and many other tags and you if you want to insert a video in a web page you have to use the video tag if you want to insert an audio file you have to use the audio tag even if you do a single thing in a HTML so you have to use the tag for that thing let's start now I'm going to tell you the HTML page structure so what is the HTML page structure all the websites have the HTML pages and HTML pages has the specific structure that defines the HTML pages so now here I'm gonna write the HTML page structure and here here I'm gonna write the HTML page structure according to the HTML5 here first of all I'm gonna write the exclamation mark the angle brackets and then we have to write doc type HTML so now question is why we are writing this line this when we render our file in the browser then this line tells the browser that this document is using the HTML5 this doc type represents the document type and document type is the HTML it represents the document is of type HTML5 and then we have to write another tag so now here I want to tell you uh, this tag does not have the closing tag there are 
few tags in the HTML that have not the closing tag. Now we have to write the HTML tags. We will write all the HTML code in between these HTML tags. First of all, write the opening tag that is HTML. <coughs> then the closing tag here is HTML. So now in between these tags, we will write all the HTML. And now, first of all, we need to write the head tag. Here is the head, its starting tag, and then we have to write the head closing tag. So now, why we write this head tag? The head tag is used to link the pages to the other pages and it is also used to give the title of the page it is also used to des describe the content of the page and the author of the page and now here in between this i'm going to write the title tag here i'm going to write title and here is its closing tag and in between these tags we need to write the title here i'm going to write the fahad ashfaq and now let's render this file in the browser here is the file here i have rendered this file and now here you see that this is the title of this file this html file now i'm going to tell you about another thing that is the meta tag so this meta tag is used to give the information about the page and here we are able to specify the content of the page and the author of the page and another thing that is the char set here i'm going to write the char set and here i'm going to write and the author of the page and the content of the page these are the attributes of the meta tag and these are excluded from the html5 html5 in the html5 uh, this is not necessary to specify the author and the content of the page but if we specify the author and the content it is just okay and now here i am going to tell you about another tag that is the body this is the head tag this is the head tag and it just it just contain the general information about the page but there is another tag that is the body tag the body tag contain all the information about the page this is the body of the page this is all this is the body of the page and here I'm going to write the body tag. In between these tags, we have to specify all the information that is in the body. Here is the body. And this can, it contain all the information of the page. Here another thing that is the attributes. All the HTML elements have the attributes. Uh, attributes are just the properties of the element this body is the this body is an element this head is an element this title is an element meta is an element and all these elements have the attributes that are the properties and attributes are just the way of providing additional information about the element and now how to write the attribute here I'm gonna write a attribute of the meta tag first of all we need to write the name of the attribute and then equal and then double quotes and then we need to write the value of the attribute in between the double quotes and here I'm gonna write a real attribute that is the char set here we need to write the char set char set representing the character set what character set now this attribute tell the browser what character set this page is using here i'm going to write the name of the character set that is utf8 
it tells the browser this page is using the UTF-8 character set. Basically, character set include the symbols and the letters and all the special characters and all the things. And here I'm going to uh, write another attribute that, that is the lang attribute. Lang attribute is used to specify the language of the page. Here I'm going to write English US. EN represent the English and US represent the US English. So it tell the browser this page is using the US English. This is the character of an HTML page. So I hope you enjoy my lecture. If you have any problems so kindly add the discussion on Udemy. I will help you as much as I can. Thank you for watching this video. In my next video I am gonna discuss a paragraph, how to add a paragraph, headings and the comments and how to format the text. See you in the next video. Hi guys, in the previous lecture we have learned the page structure and the attributes. I have tell you how we can define our page structure. So here I have already created the page structure. This is the body and this is the head. Here I have given the title Fahadish Fahak because we need the page structure in every lecture. We need the page structure in every web page so that's why i have created the page structure already so in this way our time can be saved and now in this lecture i'm going to teach you the paragraph heading comment how to give the paragraph in a web page how to add a heading how to add a comment how to give the different format to the text how to add the quotes so let's start first of all here i'm going to give the paragraph so for this here is the paragraph tag. To insert a paragraph we have to write this paragraph tag first of all write the angle brackets then P and then we have to write its closing tag. We have to write angle brackets then forward slash and then P. So in this way we can give the paragraph tags paragraph element and now in between these two tags we have to place our paragraph so here I'm gonna copy a paragraph from the Wikipedia I'm gonna copy this text here it is and now here is the paragraph and now here I have already opened this file in the browser here you can see that here is the file 5.html so I have already opened it so our time can be saved so here you see that the paragraph is inserted so now I'm gonna increase its lines here paste it so now this is a big paragraph and it have so many lines but here you see that this paragraph when we render uh, when it render in the browser so it have only five lines but in the editor it have more than ten lines so what is happening here I want to tell you something that when the browser start executing this paragraph so browser does not count the new lines that is given in the editor that is here that is here is the another new line that is here so these new lines are not counted by the browser browser add the new line whenever it needs here you see that the screen is full so that's why it add the new lines if we want to add the new line at any space so how we can add let's say we want to add a new line at this space that is on after the on and now here I'm gonna check where is the on here we want to add the new line here or anywhere here I'm gonna add it after the less so we have to write the tag to add a new line here we have to write br and it have just its opening tag it have not the closing tag so here you see that the new line is added so if you want to write here forward slash then it will be okay both things are fine so in this way you have to add the new lines as many as you want here if you, if you want to add another new line so in this way you can add it here it is another and the next thing is horizontal rule 
you are also able to add a border inside the text or anywhere you can add a just like a simple line so we can in the programming language we call it horizontal rule and here I'm gonna add the horizontal rule for this we have to write the horizontal rule tag here is the HR if you write the forward slash then it will be okay it is not necessary so here you see that a horizontal rule is added a line is added so the next thing is how to add the headings you have already know many websites are using heading like this this is a heading this is a heading so now I'm gonna tell you about the headings here is after this here I'm gonna add a heading first of all we need to know something about the heading the heading have the separate tags for the specific font size and the font weight so first of all I'm gonna apply a heading tag who have the biggest size so here is h1 so if we write here udemy so now here let's see what happens here you see that a heading is added but if you want less size less font weight here is h2 it starts from h1 and goes to h6 h6 is the last this is my c cleaner so let's execute it here is the h2 and in this way you can write all of these here is the h3 i'm gonna write all of these h4 and here is the h5 and here is the last one h6 here is the h6 and here is the h5 here is the h4 and here is the h3 so here all of these headings are present so in this way you can insert the heading and my next thing is that I want to teach you is the comment so what is the comment the comment is just used to describe the code it is just used to add the detail of the code and the comment is only added by the programmer it is only visible to the programmer it is not shown on the web page like we don't want to show the extra things on the web page anybody don't want to show the detail of the code or the text on the website because everybody want to show the necessary things on the web page so here I'm gonna write the detail of this code here I'm gonna write this is a little paragraph you can write any detail you can write the author and the detail uh, created date of the paragraph or anything so now let's execute it so here you see that this detail of the code is shown on the screen so to save from this condition what we need to do we have to put this text in the comment tags here are the comment tag this is a starting tag we have to write angle bracket exclamation sign then two minuses and then at the end of the comment here is two minuses and then the angle brackets so in this way in between these two tags you have to put the comment and now let's execute it so here you see that this comment is not shown on the screen so now it is visible to the programmer edit to by the programmer and edited by the programmer so the next thing is formatting we are able to give the different format to the text here I'm gonna show you what is the formatting here first of all here I'm gonna write any text let's make a website and now here first of all if we want to bold this text so what we need to do we have to put the bold tags so the text is become bold here you see that this text is bold here I'm gonna make this headings in the comment then you can see this clearly here is this here you see that this text is a bold otherwise it look like this 
and if we want to make this text italic here is the italic so now here is the italic so here I'm gonna zoom the screen so here you see that this text is italic tilde it and here if we want to show an important text so we have to put the strong around this text here it is it's just like a bold and if we want to show a deleted text or removed text so we have to write del you can put these tags as many as you want you can use these tags as many as you need in a website and now here is the deleted text and the next thing is emphasize it is also used to show an important text here is emphasized and here is it is just like italic and now if we want to insert a text we show we want to show that this text is inserted so here is the text it have the underline and if we want to highlight the text so we have to write mark here is the mark so now text is highlighted and here if we want to make the text small so we have to write small here is the small text it have the less size as compared to this text and now here I'm gonna put some other text before in that after it so you can understand it clearly here it is here is a space and now let's execute it so here you see that this text is big that is after and before it but the middle text is small and the next thing is subscript so what is the subscri subscript so when we put the subscript so what happened now the text is shown in the baseline of the line or as compared to the other text here you see that this text is now in the base and if we write superscript we have to write sup s u p and now the text is shown on the top here you see that it is on the top so in this way you can give different format to the text and the next thing is code how to insert a code in the text here I'm gonna remove this here I'm gonna copy a line from the above paragraph and if we want to show any code in the web page then how to do this here what we need to do we have to write Q tag before and after it here is the Q tag so now here you see that this text have the inverted commas before and after it so in this way you can show the code but here another thing that is block code if we want to show a complete paragraph that is quoted from another website so how to show that the block code is just used to show the text or a section of a content from another website that is copy from another website here I'm gonna increase these lines here is these lines so now here I'm gonna put block code so now assume that this text is copy from another website here is block code so now here you see that this text is shown as a block code and we can identify the block code because it have the space on its left side and on its top it is the space and now you can also give the site reference here you have to write attribute site and you can give the link of the site from which site you have copy this block code so here paste it so in this way you can give that link 
so this is the block code and all the things and here i want to tell you about another thing that is the abbreviation abbreviation is used in almost every website uh, what is the abbreviation we have put uh, a very long word in a small code and then we have put its abbreviation when we take the mouse over it its abbreviation is shown to us here i'm going to show you first let's see here we have put html so now let's execute it so now when any person visit our website so he read this paragraph and he did not know the meaning of the html so how we can know the meaning of the html by using the abbreviation here what we need to do we have to write a double b r that is the tag of the abbreviation and now here we have to put the title in the starting tag here is title and then equal and here i'm going to put it in the next line and in the title we have to write its meaning complete letter what it stands for here is hypertext markup language it is the abbreviation now save it render it and now anybody takes the mouse over it so its abbreviation is shown to us so thank you for watching this video if you have any problems so kindly add the discussion on udemy in my course i will see you in the next video thank you for watching this video hi guys in the previous lecture we have learned the paragraph the comment how to add the heading how to add the quote and now in this lecture we are going to learn the anchor tag so first of all what is the anchor tag that anchor tag is an element by using this element you can add a link in our web page so now here i'm going to show you what is the anchor tag here i'm going to open the wikipedia click on the first link and here you see that these are the links these are added by using the anchor tag so what you need to do you have to put a anchor tag and then you have to specify a destination of an anchor tag this is just a simple text when we click on it so here you can go to an other page so this is the thing this is the hyper reference or the destination so now here i'm going to give a link i'm going to create an anchor tag first of all what we need to do we have to write a in the anchor angle brackets that is the anchor tag and here is its closing tag and in between these two tags you have to write the text that is appear on the screen here you see that uh, here is the cominenus whatever if we call it and now here i'm going to write this text here i'm going to give the link of the google search engine so here i'm going to write google and now here we have to specify the hyper reference when we click on the google so the page goes to a destination here i'm going to write https www.google.com and now the link is created here i'm going to reload the page here is the link and when we click on it so it goes to the google.com google search engine here you see that the google search engine is open but you can also able to give the link of any other website here i'm going to copy this link and then paste it here and now when we click on the link so it goes to wikipedia here is i'm going to back it and here click on it and now the wikipedia is open and you can also give the link of the image here i'm going to open the pitbull image pitbull lovely singer and here is pitbull 
and here I'm going to open this image and click on view image and now I, here I'm going to copy this link and then here I'm going to paste this link here so now when we click on the link so that image will be open here I'm going to open that page here is the page this is the web page and now click on it and here you see that this image is open so this is the way we can also give the link of the image but here I want to tell you another thing when we click on this link so the image is open in this tab it will not be open in another tab or in other words when we click on the links so the destination page is open in the new tab so here I'm gonna open this image in the new tab here in the opening tag you have to write target and then here if we write underscore blank target value is underscore blank then the destination will be open in the new tab here I'm gonna reload it so here you see that the picture is open in the new tab and you can also apply this target on the links of the websites on the search engines all, all the things and now I want to show you another thing that is how to insert the image in the page here I'm gonna show you how to insert the image here leave this and come on here first of all we have to write the image tag it have not the closing tag and now in the opening tag we have to give the source the address of the image and the name and the extension of the image so here I want to tell you something here is the image here is our HTML5 file that is the 6.html and here is a picture that is for its name is 4 and its type is jpg here you see that this its type is jpg and now both things are in the same folder so now how to write the source when the image and the html file in the same folder we have to directly write the name and the extension of the image so it will be loaded here I'm gonna reload this page and here is the image and here is the link and here another condition is if the image is present in a in a other folder here is its name is E I'm gonna give it E name and then here I'm gonna cut this image and paste it here so now image is in another folder that is existing in the same folder where the 6.html place so now we have to write the folder name before the name of the image and we have to write the forward slash image is in the e folder and now here you see that the image is still present but here if we edit the name of the folder so it's the wrong folder so here is the image is not loaded so here and now here I want to tell you another thing that is if the image is present in any place in our computer so here I'm gonna place the image I have already cut the image so now here I'm gonna place the image in my program files in the C here I'm gonna cut the image here is the image so now here I'm gonna place it in my program files and now here is the image it is now in the program file in the C directory and my HTML5 file is in the D local disk D and now here what we need to do we have to click on this bar and we have to copy the address the complete address of the image here I have copied this and now here we have to write that address and then a forward slash 
the image is in the C local disk and then a program file and then the image and here we have to make all the for backward slashes to the forward slashes and now here is the image is still present and here I'm gonna change its directory so it is not loaded so in this way when the image is present in any place in our computer you have to give the complete address and you can get that address by simply clicking on the bar and now here I want to tell you another thing that is here you can give the alternative alt means alternative here you can write any text when the image is not load so this text is shown on the screen when our internet connection is too slow so this text will be shown on the screen here I'm gonna write sorry it's not loaded and now here I'm gonna change this directory so the image is not load and this text is shown on the screen and if the image is loaded so this text is not going to be shown on the screen and here I want to tell you another thing we are also able to provide a link on the image when we click on the image so a specific website is open here I'm gonna make this link in the comment here is and now here is the image and what we need to do to produce a link on an image here we have to write the anchor tags and here is the closing tag and now in between these anchor tags you have to write the image and then the source and now what we need to do we have to insert the image at the place of the text here you see that we have write the Google in between two tags now we are gonna write we are gonna insert the image here I'm gonna copy this and then paste it here and here in the opening tag we have to write hyper reference and here I'm gonna write the link of google.com so now when we click on the image so this destination is going to be open here is load this and here you see that this image is not have any link when we click on it so no page is going to be open and here when we click on this image so here you see that google search engine is going to be open here we have put the wrong name here we have write four w's we have to write three and here i'm gonna reload it and here is the google search engine is going to be open here it is and the next thing is the table the tables in the html also have the rows and the columns like the simple table here i'm gonna show you a picture of the table here you see that we are gonna create the table like this first of all we will create the first row it have the headings then the second row then the third row then the fourth row so here I'm not gonna put the colors like this on the table because we need to use the CSS I'm gonna use the CSS in my next section in the CSS section so that's why here I'm gonna create the simple table only in the HTML so first of all what we need to do here I'm gonna make this thing in the comment here is the comment and now here I'm gonna create the table so first of all what we need to do we need to put the table tag here is the table tag it's opening and here is its closing tag and now here what we need to do we have to put the first row first row contain the heading and first of all we have to put the tags for the first row it means tr means t 
table row and it will create the first row in the table and now what we need to do we have to put these table headings and we have to put these table headings in the first row and here I'm gonna put these table headings in the th tag th stands for table heading here is the table heading and here we have to put the number this is the first row and now here I'm gonna put the second table heading third and fourth here I'm gonna increase it here it is and now here I'm gonna write first name and here is last name and now here is the roll number so now let's reload it these things are loaded here I'm gonna backward and now here you see that this table is created and now here you see that there is no border there is no separation we will put the separation later and now the first row is created and now what we need to do we have to create another tr tags and we need to put this uh, number then this first name last name and 94 in the html we have to create the table row wise first of all we will create first row then put its data then the second row then put its data and here is the table row and here what we need to do first of all we have to put the number and here this is the table data we have to write table data td here is the td stands for table data this is the table heading and here i'm going to write first number and here is the last name here i'm going to put steve and here is the last name is jonas and now here i'm going to put its roll number is 97 and now let's reload it so here you see that this is the second row F number is present here first name is here jonah is here and here is the 97s so now this is the second row of the data in this way you have to put the third row and then put its data here i'm gonna copy it here it is and now here it here is this and now here is the third one and here i'm gonna paste increase this row and now here it is and now here i want to tell you something that is the border we are also able to apply the separation lines on it what we need to do in the opening tag you have to write border one here is the one so now it will create the border around all the table things here i'm going to zoom it here you see that the border border or double we will make this border single by using the css but in the next section and now here you see that the space inside these cells are low so i'm going to increase this space inside the cell we have to apply the cell padding here is the cell padding equal and here i'm going to write one so it is one pixel so now here you see that it is literally increased here i'm going to write 10 then it will be increased gradually here it is so in this way you can create a table and if you have any problems so kindly add the discussion i will see you in the next lecture thank you for watching this video see you in the next video hi guys in this lecture i'm going to teach you html list and there are many types of list i'm gonna teach you each and everything about list and then the html frame how to insert a frame in a html page and then block level elements and inline elements so first of all start with the html list there are three types of html list first is on order list second is order order list and the third one is the description list so let's start with the first unordered list so for the unordered list we have to write the 
tag ul ul define the unordered list and here is its closing tag and now in between this we are able to put the list items for this we have to write the tag opening and closing tag li define the list item and here we are able to put the t and all the things that we want here is the coffee and here is the milk and here is the cell and let's check it here you see that this is the unordered list it have not any numbering or anything on its left side so it is unordered and you can also remove these bullets with the CSS but here I'm not gonna discuss the CSS and the second type of the list is ordered list so how to make the ordered list if we change a little thing in the unordered list so we can make the ordered list what we need to do just change this ul to ol ol define the order list so now let's check it how it look like so here you see that this unordered list is become the order list and it have the numbering so the order list also have the list item you can put the list items as many as you want and here you can also change these numbers to the roman numbers and the uh, alphabet english alphabets and now here i'm gonna put here the type attribute and if we put the uppercase i so the numbering is changed into the uppercase roman here is the uppercase roman and if we write only lowercase i so there is a lowercase roman and if we change it to the uppercase or uppercase a then it shows the uppercase alphabets and if low then it shows the lowercase alphabets and if we want to print the numbers then simply write the one then it prints the one two three four so now this is the order and on order list uh, so now I'm gonna describe the description list so what is the description list the description list contain two things first thing is the term description list contain a term and it also contain the description of that term so here I'm gonna create the description list dl tag and its closing tag here is its closing tag and now in between these tags here first of all what we need to do we need to write the dt dt defines the description term and this dl defines the description list so here we need to write the closing tag and here in between this I'm gonna write T T is the description term and after this we need to write the description here is the closing tag and now here we are able to write the description of the T here I'm gonna write uh, I will I will drink it so now here you see that this is the term and here is the description and using this strategy you can create the description list and description terms as many as you want here I'm gonna uh, create some others here here and so now save it here what you need to do just uh, here add the space here let's save it and here you see that it is added uh, so now here I'm gonna show you another thing that is 
HTML frame how to add the frame in a HTML page so first of all what is the frame the what is the HTML frame uh, the HTML frame is used to add another website in our web page so let's start here here I'm gonna add another website in our page uh, so first of all what we need to write iframe it is the opening tag and then the closing tag here is the iframe and here we need to write the source and here I'm gonna add any other website like CNN or w3schools.com here I'm gonna copy this link and paste it here and now let's refresh this is the w3schools.com and now refresh this page and here you see that w3schools.com is added into this frame and here is the menu and all the things so you can also add the width and height here I'm gonna add the width and height here is the width I'm gonna add the 500 and here is the height is 200 so now let's check it and here it is added so now you can add any website in your web page so now I'm gonna teach you the block level elements so what is the block level elements block level elements are those elements which is started with the new line and end at the new line we can also say that every block level element have the new line at the start and at the end so here I'm gonna add uh, I'm gonna write a block level element heading is a block level element and here I'm gonna write head and here is the h1 and now I'm gonna copy this uh, and paste it at the start so you can see the new line clearly and here you see that before the head there is a new line and after the head there is also a new, new line so the block level elements are just like a block it covers the new line before and after it so now there is another block level element that is the div so first of all what is the div here is this is the w3schools.com so almost every website uh, is built into the div so what is the div the div is used to manage the content in the website here this is the div this is the div and all these things are managed using the div and here I'm gonna show you the page source and here you will see the divs here here you can see this is a div this is a div this is a div and all of the block of the uh, content is the is placed inside the div so there is another definition of the div the div uh, is a container for other HTML elements or we can also say that it is used to manage the content of the website it is used to give the style to the block of the content so now here how to write the div here is the starting tag and here is the closing tag and in between this we can uh, place any HTML element or any text and here is the div but here I'm not gonna into I'm not going into the detail because we need to apply the CSS to explain the div so I will explain the div in the next section and now here I'm gonna explain the inline elements here I'm gonna explain the inline element so what is the inline element when we create any inline element so uh, there is no new line is created before and after it and the inline element is used to uh, place the small text in the web pages here I'm gonna create an inline element that is span 
and it is just used for placing the small text and uh, and we, we are able to give the style to this small text and there is no new line before and after it here you can see that so this is all so i hope you understand my lecture if you have any problems so kindly contact me i will help you as much as i can in my next lecture i am going to discuss how to create a form how to create an input field how to create the radio buttons and all the form that you can see on the facebook so i will meet you in the next lecture hi guys in this lecture i'm gonna teach you how to create a form and how to take the different input values from the form and now let's check it here i'm gonna show you a form here is a facebook page and now you're gonna see the form and here you see that this is a form this is a text field where we can input our name and here is the email text field and here is the email field and here we can input the password and we can select the gender so now I'm gonna teach you each and everything how to create this form or any form so first of all to create a form we need to place the form tag here is the starting tag and here is the closing tag so in between these tags we need to write all the form code so first of all to create an input field like this to create an input field like this we need to write a tag whose name is input tag the input tag have not any closing tag so now we need to write the type of this input field so I'm gonna write the type of the input field is text this is just a text field like this this is a text field and now let's check it here you see that a text field is created so this is a way to create a text field but now here I'm gonna place a text to navigate this text field here I'm gonna place label uh, is the label and it's closing tag and here I'm gonna write the first name and now let's check it and here is the first name and we are now we are able to create the second field and third field and now here I'm gonna copy this uh, so now here I'm gonna write the last name and it is also the type of text and here it is created last name and here you see that a new line is not added so here I'm gonna add a new line by the line break and you and here I have not write the forward slash it depends upon you it is not necessary if you write the forward slash then it is good so now this is the way of uh, creating a text field a simple text field but now i am going to teach you how to create the radio buttons like this here these are the radio buttons to select the gender and now i'm going to create the radio buttons like this uh, so now i'm going to copy this and here i'm going to edit this gender and now we have to change its type to radio here is the radio and now here I'm gonna write the mail mail and now copy this and here is the female and now let's execute it here you see that these radio buttons are created but here you see that when we select uh, in this form we are able to select only one radio button but here you are able to select both of these because we have not give it the name and the value so now what is the name and the value name is just an attribute 
and we are able to assign the name to all the input fields and then we have the value of all the input fields so now I'm gonna give it a name here I'm gonna write the gender this field have the name gender and this field also have the name gender so now this field have the value male when we select this field this field then gender have the value male and when we select this field then the gender have the value female here is the female so now at a time we can select only one value here you see that both values are not selected so this is the way of creating the radio buttons and later I will teach you how to create the other things and now I want to tell you about the submit button here you see that this is a submit button when we click on it uh, then you will go to another destination and the form is submitted so how to create it here what we need to do we need to create an input field of type submit here is the submit submit so now it is created here you can see it, this button is created but you can also uh, edit this text here I'm gonna edit this text how to do it give it a value value equal and I'm gonna write sign up and here I'm gonna add the BR so now here you see that this sign up button is created uh, and now I want to tell you some other thing that is related to the form when we click on the submit button here when we click on this submit button uh, then the form is submitted uh, to a special page the all the values in the form or go to another page and that page will save the values uh, to the database when you click on the submit button then the values are submitted into the databases values are stored into the databases then <coughs> how to write the address of the page here uh, we need to write the action when we click on the submit button then this action contain the destination of the form values here I'm gonna write uh, a dot HTML or PHP you can write any destination so this is the destination I have just write an example and another thing is the method how the values travel to the destination page so here write the method attribute and then we have to write the method here we are able to write two methods first is get the get value is used when we want to send the common information common information like search engine queries and the such ordinary information is travel using the get method but if we want to send the secret information or the passwords then we need to use the post because all the values when we use the get method then all the values form values are accessible through the page address and in the post method these values are not accessible through the page address so now I am gonna tell you about another thing that is how to create uh, these select options how to create these select options and all these things I will teach you these things input type things these three fields in my next lecture so now let's create the select options like this so first of all to create the options we need to write the select tag here is the select and then it's closing tag <coughs> and here is we I'm gonna give it a name <coughs> country 
I am going to create the options of the countries list of the countries so now here we need to write the option tag option and here is its closing tag and then in between this we are able to write any option here I'm going to write China and then here I'm going to write US and then Europe so now these options are created and now let's look at it and here is the selective option and now here I'm going to add the BR then you can watch it clearly here you can see that this option is created this is the option China US Europe like this here are the months so using this method you can create the dates and the month and anything you want and then what you need to do you need to give it the values here I'm gonna give the value China and here is the value US when we click on the China option then then this country have the value China if we click on the US then this US have the value US and here I want to tell you about another thing here you see that uh, there is a month and the day and the year it have not any value at the start but here you see that there is a first value at the start and you can create a dummy value here I'm gonna create a value which have the option country it shows the country it have not any value when we select it it have not any value so now when we load the page so it have the first value that shows that what this option representing so now we can understand this option representing the countries and like this you can create anything here I'm gonna create the month and here is the option and now here I'm gonna create I'm gonna close it and create another select so I hope you understand this is a separate select option and now I'm gonna create a separate separate select option so this uh, you can create the options as many as you want you can create the select options as many as you want and here I'm gonna write the month and here is the March and here is the April you can write as many as values you want and you also need to edit these values here you need to write March and here is the February and here you, also, you can also edit this and now let's check it so here are the months are created I'm just showing you an example and another thing that is the selected attribute when you load the page uh, then a specific value is selected here uh, I'm gonna write it select it so when we load the page so the Europe is already selected so here you see that the Europe is selected on the screen and another thing that is in the form is the text area the text area is present in many websites that is used to get the comments of the people's comments of the users here is the text area and here is its closing tag so now here the text area is created and when we load it so here you can see that this is a text area this box is a text area where you can write any text and 
you can also give it a rows and the columns here I'm gonna give it the rows rows are 10 and the columns are 100 so now its width and height is increased and you can also adjust it and the next thing is the button you can create any type of the button using the button tag here is the button and and here I'm gonna give it the value click and it is the type of uh, email or you can write the submit or you can write the text so now here the button is created so it have you can create any type of the button and then like submit so now a submit type of button is created here you see that I'm gonna load the page and here is the click button but it have not the specific address so this is a way of creating any type of a button and another thing is the border around the form here here I'm gonna create a border around the form and the heading of the form here what we need to do we need to write the field set here is the field set you have to write the field set after the uh, starting tag of the form after the opening tag of the form and close the field set tag at the closing tag of the form so now load it so here you can see that a border is created and here you can create a heading of the form how to create it after the field set you need to write legend or legend and here is the legend and here in between these legend tag you can write anything here I'm gonna write user information and let's check it here this heading is created so this is the way of how we we can create the forms in the next lecture I'm going to discuss the different input type how to create an input field which takes the password and the emails and all other things numbers and the month and dates so let's check it in the next lecture hi guys in this lecture I'm going to teach you uh, how to create the different types of input field here you can see that on the Facebook there are many types of the field where we can input the password and the email and some other things so now I'm gonna teach you how to create the input fields like this password for the emails and the telephone numbers and the, all other things so now first of all I'm gonna create the input field of type password here is the password so now you can input the password in it here you can input the letters and the alphabet and all these things are converted into the static and the other thing is the checkbox you can also create the checkbox in many when we are installing the software so there is a checkbox present which says that I accept the agreements and all the things so you can create a checkbox like this you can tick it and you can also create the label for it here you can create that label and the text and the next thing is uh, you can also create a input field of type button so then a button is created this is a empty button and you can give it the value here I'm gonna give it the value uh, click so now here you can see that and the next thing is the number you can also create an input field of type number where you can input the number here this is the field you can input the number and also the alphabets but here you are also able to specify the range of the numbers here 
here you can also specify the range of the numbers here I have corrected it and here you can see that you can able to put the numbers only in this field but you can also able to specify the range of the numbers here I'm gonna write minimum and minimum number is 0 and the maximum number is the 10 and here I am also gonna give it a name the name is test so now here is the field and here you can see that this is the lowest value and this is the highest value and you can also create the value for this when you load the page so that number is present in that field here I'm gonna give it 9 and here you see that when we load it so the 9 is present and you can also create the step so first of all what is the step the step is just a jump uh, when we click on this button so here you see that the 10 is converted into the 9 and 9 is converted into the 8 so this is it have the one step and you can create a step of two or three values here I'm gonna give it the step of three values so now when we click on it so it reduce the value by three here you can see that it increase or reduce by three values and the next thing is the date you can also create a input field of type date here I'm gonna create the date and now let's check it and here you are able to input the dates and all things here you can see that you can change it you can change anything and you can also able uh, to specify the minimum and maximum date here I'm gonna give the minimum date is uh, 2000 is the year and then hyphen and then uh, 12 month and then 6 day and 6 December 2000 and the maximum date is the 2016 and the month is uh, August that is the 8 and then hyphen and then 6 is the day here is the 6th day so now let's load it and and now here you can see the minimum date here I'm gonna uh, put the years here is the minimum date here I'm gonna select the minimum date and here you can see that the minimum date is 2000 so it cannot goes down to the minimum date so here is a little error we have not write the day in the two digits here I'm gonna write six day here is the 26 August so now let's load it and now here here you can see that it cannot goes up to the 2016 here is the 2016 and here you can see that this is the December and we cannot go beyond it 2016 we can not go above the 2016 and we can also not go above the 2000 here you can see that this is the 2000 and when we click on it so it return to the 2016 and now this remove this step and value and you can also give the value in the same format first year and then a month and then day like this here I'm gonna give it the value uh, 2013 month is 7th 07 and then the day is 5th so now let's load it so here is the value 5th July uh, so now here I'm I want to tell you another thing that is you can also give the date time here I'm gonna remove it and show you how you can give the date time date 
time local in the, uh, the full syntax is the date time local so now you can clear it so here you can see that here you can able to select the date and then here is the minutes and here is the hours and here is the am pm you can select the time and the date and the next thing is the color you can also input the color here is the color here is the color picker when we click on it so you can select any color and the other thing is the time you can only able to put the time here you can select the time and odds and all the things you are also able to put the week it shows the full calendar you can also able to put the month and all the things here is the one is the month or sorry one uh, one uh, this is the first week if we select any date so it shows it is the second week of the 2016 so in this way you can put the week and you can also input the month here here you can see that here when I put the seven date so it shows that this is the date this is the January of 2016 and you can also input the number tell defines the telephone number here you can input the telephone number or any alphabet and then you can also create a search field where you can where we can search the things in our website for this you have to use the php you can also give it the type of the url here is the url you can input the url https and all thing www dot and you can also input the email here you can able to input the email so this is the way how we can input the different values in the form and in my next lecture i'm going to discuss the attribute of the input fields how to disable the input field how to uh, make the input field for read only how to place the placeholder like this this is a placeholder first name last name this text is a placeholder how to apply the required attribute for the different fields so let's see in the next lecture if you have any problems so kindly add the discussion on Udemy, I will help you as much as I can. Hi guys, in this lecture you will be learning the different attributes of the input fields. So here you see that in the Facebook page, here I'm going to load the Facebook page. Here in this page you can see that uh, this is a text, this is a placeholder and there are many attributes are applied on these fields. So now I'm going to teach you these attributes. So here I'm going to edit this and create a simple text field. And I'm going to give it the name is test. And then the value is Peter. So now let's load it and here you see that we can edit this name we can put another name so this is editable if we don't want to allow anybody to edit this field so what we need to do here we just need to write the read only attribute so this field is become read only we cannot edit this field here you can see that we cannot edit this field this is a previous page so we cannot edit this field and you can also disable this field here I'm going to give it the disable attribute here you can see that this field is disabled so it have the changed color and now we can also give the size to the field here is the size so size is the length of the field I'm going to give it 50 
so now its length is increased so here you can see that and you can also give the maximum length so what is the maximum length the maximum length uh, is just the number of characters you can input in the field here I'm gonna write the five so you can input the only five characters in the field I'm gonna remove it and put the characters here you can see that I am typing but the characters are not typed into this field and the next thing is the placeholder you can also place a text in the field that represent what this field about here you can see that this field is about the first name and you can also create the text in it here I'm going to remove this value and place a placeholder then equal and in between these double quotes you can write any text I'm going to write the this field is for the first name so now let's check it here you can see that this field have the first name uh, text so when we write any text so the previous text is removed so this is the way we can use it and the other thing is the accept char set so what is the accept char set here I'm gonna write the form tag then we can understand it clearly here is the form tag so here I'm going to write the method is post all the letters are capital in the method value and now here we can give the attribute accept char set the accept char set accept a specific character set values here I'm going to write utf8 so now uh, you can input all the characters so now this form accept only those values that belong to this character set that is UTF so now uh, another thing that is uh, the no validate attribute here if we apply the no validate attribute then the values will not be validate when we submit the form uh, and the next thing is the autocomplete attribute so what is the autocomplete attribute here I'm gonna write the autocomplete attribute it automatically fill the field with the previous values like this here here uh, I have put the name Asad in this field so it shows the previous value here if I put the random values then it shows these values here here you can see that these are the two values which I have put in this field so I'm gonna create these auto fillings so what we need to do here I'm gonna write uh, input type is equal to submit and now let's check it here I'm gonna put some random text here is the random text so here you can see that this is the autocomplete this autocomplete attribute show the previous value we have put in that field so now the next thing is the require attribute here I'm gonna put the require attribute and I'm not gonna reload the page here I want to show you something here if I submit the empty field so it is submitted but here you can see that in this form when I try to submit the empty field so it shows the notification fill the fields so here uh, I have uh, write a attribute required so I cannot submit the empty fields here I reload the page so uh, here we need to remove the no validate function because require attribute validate this field here you see that when we uh, submit this empty field so it shows a notification so in this way you can use this attribute and the next thing is the encryption type so what is the ink type ink type is the encryption type and it have the three values first value is the text plane this is the plane so now when we give 
this value and when we uh, fill the fields and click on the submit so all the spaces are converted into the plus symbols and the characters are not encoded and all the characters are stored into the destination or into the databases and if we give it the value multiple multiple and here is the form data so now when we give this value so the characters are not encoded the characters are not in converted into the special characters or anything else it is just used for the heavy files when we submit the picture so this value break the picture into the small pieces and uh, the third value is the application 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 forward slash x ww and here is the form and here is the url encode it so now this is the value and this value is used when we want to convert the spaces and uh, when we want to convert the characters and the letters into some other letters or it is used to hide the data while submitting the form and the next thing is the pattern we can also define the pattern of the values a pattern of the given input here i'm gonna define the pattern so when we input the password uh, uh, while we are sign up for the facebook id so the password must contain the capital letters lower letters and the special character this is the pattern so here i'm going to uh, specify a pattern it contains the capital letters and the lowercase letters here you see that it is a capital alphabets and the lower alphabets and then its quantity is five only five letters are allowed in this input field so now i'm gonna load it and here i'm gonna put the letters so here you see that please match the uh, requested format so now i'm gonna fulfill the format capital letter lowercase letter and the five letters so now it is submitted so this is the pattern and the next thing is the image you can also upload the image here I'm gonna copy this and remove it and here what you need to do just write the name and the type of the image if the image is placed in another folder then you need to write the complete address if it is in the subfolder then you're only able to write the subfolder name here the image is in the subfolder I'm gonna write a dot jpg here is the images in the subfolder and now let's reload it and here we need to specify the width and the height of the image here I'm gonna write 200 pixels and then the height is the 100 pixel so now let's execute it here we need to change the type of the image here this is the source this is the source and here we need to write the type of the image here i'm going to write the image and then here is a little error so write the type of the image and then source or the address of the image and now reload it and here is the image so then the next thing is uh, how we can upload the file here now I'm going to show you how we can upload the file here remove this width and here is and now remove it and now here I'm going to write the type is the file we have to upload the file so now we can upload the file on this page continue and here you can choose any file here i'm going to choose this file you can upload it avast ui xz and you can also upload the multiple files by writing the attribute multiple so you can select more than one files here 
you can select more than one files here you can see that here is a more than one files I'm gonna refresh it and now you can select here I'm gonna go into my directory and these are the two files so the two files are uploaded we can also able to specify the extension or the type of the file like image if we want to upload the image then we need to write the accept then equal and then double quotes and in this we need to write the image then forward slash static so now we are able to upload the image here's reload it and here now I'm going into my images here is only one image so you can upload only the image and you can also write the audio file here so you can upload the audio file if you write the video then you can able to upload the video file and you can also able to specify the extension like dot jpg dot uh, uh, png dot uh, any extension dot html dot php then it will upload that kind of file here i'm gonna write the html then it will upload only html type file because it have the extension of html here you creation and five websites and files so here you, you see that this is a image folder it have a image but it it is not showing the image because it have to upload the HTML file here if we select the HTML file so it load the HTML file so this is the way we can use the different attributes on the form if you have any problems so kindly add the discussion on Udemy I will help you as much as I can thank you for watching this video see you in the next video hi guys in this lecture I am going to teach you how to add the audio video in our HTML page uh, so first of all I am going to add the audio in our HTML page here what we need to do just type the audio tag and there is the closing tag we are able to add only OGG WAV and the mp3 format audio in the HTML page if we add any other format audio then it will not support it by the browsers so we need to add the mp3 OGG or WAV so here I'm gonna write controls here we have to write controls and here we need to write source and then we need to write the source and then the address and the name and the extension of the file so I have copied the file in my same folder where the HTML file is placed so if the file is placed in a different folder then we have to write the full address and if the file is placed in the subfolder then we have to write the name of the subfolder but now we have to write only the name of the file that is b.mp3 b.mp3 and .mp3 is an extension here when we click on it so here is its extension .mp3 so now after it we need to write type its type is audio and format is mp3 so now let's load it in the browser here reload it and here you can see that uh, the file is loaded and I'm gonna play it here you can see that this music this music is played so this is the way we can add the audio and now if we want to add the two audio files at the same time so how to add the two audio files for example here I'm gonna copy the previous and here is our audio file and now here is the mp3 file this is another mp3 file and now here I'm gonna add the both two mp3 files at a time so here is the c.mp3 and now let's load the browser so now here let's play this file and here the first song is play in the browser 
why because uh, browser execute the first song or the first mp3 file why when the browser start executing this file and browser reach at this statement then browser load that file whose format is spotted and the file is available but here both files are available and both formats are supported then browser play the first file because both files are present and the browser gives the priority to the first file here i'm gonna edit the name of the first file and now this file is not existing in the folder and now let's load the page and here you see that the second song is played Oh, Monolove by Edward Meyer nice song and here uh, I hope you understand if first file is not present or the format is not supported then the second file execute and now I will uh, I want to show some controls here you can give the controls autoplay so when the browser loads the file it automatically plays the file here you see that it automatically play the file and the second thing is the loop so when the song is finished then this loop attribute uh, again play the audio file or song and the next thing is the muted so when we load the file it is muted here you see that the song is played but it is muted and the next thing is preload so what is preload the preload have the three values first value is auto so when we load the page uh, then it automatically loads the audio and the second value is the metadata we can also say it meta and the meta loads the uh, uh, author of the audio and the uh, uh, content of the audio it just load the information about the audio file and we can also give it value none so it it cannot do anything and the next thing is how to insert the video in a page here I'm gonna make it in a comment here is the comment and now here I'm gonna show you how to insert a video video and here is the video and here we need to write the controls to put the controls and here what we need to do just write the source and here is the src and here we need to input the file name and the extension if the both video and HTML file is in the same folder it if it is in the different location then we need to put the complete address here I'm gonna put m a dot mp4 so the video formats that are supported by the browser are mp4 web m and the OGG these three formats are supported by the browser and now we have to write the type of the file is video and its extension is mp4 and here you can see that this video is added and uh, now here, um, you see that it is so played and now here we are also able to put these four attributes autoplay here I'm gonna put the autoplay it play the video automatically here you can see that and the second one is loop muted and you can also put the loop and muted when we load the video and here we are also able to put the preload preload have the same function that is in the audio we can give it the value meta and auto and the none auto automatically loads the video and the second thing is we can also put the two videos at a time so what video will be played by the browser
the video whose format is supported or whose file is exist that file is played by the browser and at the first browser check the first video uh, extension is correct first video file is present then browser play this if this is not present then browser play the second and then third and then fourth you can put the videos and audios as many as you want so now the third thing i want to teach you is the how to add a plugin in a web page so what is the plugin the plugin there are many plugins we are using uh, the plugins are uh, used as a helper application or helping softwares uh, these are the helper softwares it is used for scanning viruses it is used for display the map in the websites it is used for verification of the bank ids and it is also used for adding the image audio video in our web pages so now i am gonna add a audio or a video in our web page using by or uh, using the plugin or by creating a plugin so there are two tags two elements we are able to use first is object object element create an object in our html page here is the object and here we are able uh, to put the data so data contain the address of the video file and the extension of the video file name so if the file ex exists in another folder then put the full address and now let's load it uh, hey, you, um, here i'm gonna don't mind the backdrop i was filming a, a video so i had some lighting set up i'm gonna comment the previous thing here is the comment so now let's load this and here is the video is loaded and you can also give it the width and the height here is the width and height here is the width and the height and you can able to play uh, these yeah, videos um, here you can see that and the second way of adding the plugin is by using the embed element here i'm going to use the embed element embed here is, embed have only the starting tag if it have not any ending tag so here we need to put the source and then width and height here I'm gonna put 5 200 height and width is width is 500 and here is the sources a dot mp4 and now let's load it here uh, you see that um, yeah, so I had some lighting. this second video is edited by the embed element here is the embed element and now I'm going to teach you how to add uh, a video from the YouTube. Many websites directly give the link of the YouTube video in their web page. So how to give this? Now I'm going to teach you. So now I'm going to teach you how to add the video from the YouTube into our web page. There are three methods to add the video from the YouTube to in our web page. First is directly copy the embed code and paste it. It is using the frame, HTML iframe. And the second is using the object. And the third is embed. So now I'm gonna make it in the comment. And now what we need to do, just go to YouTube here I have already opened the Bugs Bunny cartoon and then right click on it, copy the embed code and here we have to paste this code. So here you can see that this is the iframe height width and the source is this and the frame border is zero and then allow full screen to allow the full screen and now reload our page. So 
here you can see that this video is added you can play this video here I'm gonna close this so this is the way of adding the video and now I'm gonna add the video using the object here is the object and here is the data and then here is the closing tag of the object and then here in between these inverted commas we have to paste we have to paste this link here is this link so now let's load it so here the two videos are present here is the object video you can see this video and the third method is I'm gonna copy this that is embed here I'm gonna remove it and what we need to do just write the source and here is the embed embed and let's load it so three video files are present here you can see that this is by using the embed so this is the way of adding the video from the YouTube in my next lec in my next lecture I am gonna show you what are the HTML5 semantic elements see you in the next lecture hi guys I hope you enjoy my previous lecture and now in this lecture I am gonna teach you HTML5 semantic elements so what is the HTML5 semantic elements before discuss the semantic elements I want to tell you something here this is the CNN website and here you see that this is a header in this header the programmer develop a navigation bar to go on the other pages and this is a sidebar and this is a content area where all the content is placed this is a content area and here this is a footer the footer contain the information about uh, the social links and it, it also contain the menu uh, second menu in the page and now I want to tell you something almost every website is developed uh, by using the div you have already know why we are using the div the div is used to manage the content the div contains the other HTML elements and we can adjust the content in our web page but now HTML5 introduce some HTML5 elements the, some special HTML5 elements that, are, that we are able to use to manage the content for example we are able to use the header element for making the header and we are able to use the sidebar element that is used to make the sidebar and the section element for the block of the content and we are able to use the footer element for the footer so now here I'm going to show you how to write the header we are able to write the header like this and in between these two tags we are able to give the content but here I'm not going to show you the real example of the header because we need to apply the CSS I will do this work in the next section and the other element is the footer the footer is for creating the footer that is the lost content in any web page here is the footer and the next thing is the section the section is used for placing any block of content here is the section and now I will show you the section here you can see that this is a section it contain the content this is another section it contain the content and the other thing is the sidebar for creating the sidebar the element name is a side a side and for creating a navigation bar we have another element that is 
the nav for navigation bar what is the navigation bar the navigation bar is this all this logo and this search field and all these things are in the header and header have the navigation bar here and the next next thing is the main what is the main the main contain the unique content in a document it cannot contain any content that exists in another page for example uh, all of this web page all the content in this web page is placed inside the main or we can also say that main contain the all content it contain the unique content it contain the full web page and the next thing is the article the article contain the independent content it contain the content that is read by the user independently you have already seen the articles in many websites and the next thing is the figure so what is the figure in the figure tag you can add the image and their description so now here i'm going to add the image in the figure tag here we need to write the figure and here we need to write the closing tag figure and then in between this we need to write image img source and here is the subfolder and then a.jpg the image is placed in the subfolder here you can see that this is the image a and its extension .jpg so now reload the page here is the image and you can also add its detail here what we need to do fig caption here is the fig caption and here we can say that this code is from SKSI or whatever this thing is so here is the code and here is the text and the next thing is the detail so what is the detail the detail tag is used to give the detail of anything here what we need to do just write the detail tag and here is the detail tag and first of all what we need to do we need to write the summary here is the summary open tag first of all we write the summary any text in it and then after this we need to write the paragraphs of the details and then the next thing is the time tag if we want to give the time in any paragraph then we have to use this tag it will specify the time in a special format here we can write the time so this is the way how we handle the html5 semantic elements so see you in the next section that is about the css if you have any problems so kindly add the discussion in the course i will help you as much as i can hi guys in this section I'm gonna teach you the CSS so first of all let's start what is the CSS the CSS stands for cascading style sheet and now I'm gonna show you a website and I'll show you what is the CSS and where we are using the CSS and this is a news website CNN news uh, so here you can see that here are the colors the content is managed 
the content is aligned to the center and here is the sidebar all the things are well managed so here are many colors the pictures are managed so all these things are done by using the CSS the main function of the CSS is to give the colors to the page and it is also used to manage the content of the page and the CSS is used to make the page more attractive uh, the CSS make the page more beautiful and awesome so let's start how to apply the CSS there are three ways to apply the CSS first is external style sheet the second is internal the third is inline style sheet so let's start first of all I am gonna teach you the external style sheet create a new file and save it with the extension of .css here I'm gonna save the CSS file uh, I'm gonna give it name style .css and save it so this is a external style sheet uh, this is a CSS file you can see that file here this is a style and here is its extension and if you write any CSS code in this file so all the styles are apply on that web pages which have the link with this file so now I'm gonna create the link with this file so how to create it go into the header go into the head tag and then write the link and then relate is style sheet we are going to include the style sheet and here is the type and here we need to write the text CSS and then we need to write the hyper reference here I'm gonna write the file name and its extension if the file and the HTML file if the CSS file and the HTML file are in the same folder so here are the CSS and HTML file so now this external style sheet is now linked with this HTML page so now whenever we write any CSS in this style sheet so it effect the layout in this HTML page so now here we are also able to apply the CSS by using the internal style sheet so what we need to do at the end of the header tag we need to write the style tag and here is its closing tag so now this is an internal style sheet and in between this we are able to write the CSS code this is the second method the internal style sheet is used to apply the CSS only on one HTML page whenever we write the CSS code in this internal style sheet that code will only be apply on this HTML page but the external style sheet is used to apply the style on more than one pages if you change some CSS properties in the external style sheet then it will affect all the layout of the website but the internal style sheet properties only affect the single page and now the third one is the inline style sheet here the inline style sheet is used to give the style to a single element like paragraph heading div or any HTML element you can apply inline style sheet on any HTML element here write the paragraph tag and here is its closing tag and then in the starting tag you have to write the style then equal then double quotes and in between these double quotes you are able to write the CSS code and that properties will only 
be apply on this paragraph element so this is these are the three ways to apply the CSS and I am going to use the internal style sheet and now here I want to tell you another thing that is selector what is the CSS selector here whenever we want to apply the style on any HTML element like paragraph so here we have to write the selector in the style sheets here what we need to do we need to write the selector here I am going to show you the example and then we have to write the parentheses and then in between this we have to write the CSS properties so this is the way here we write the selector and then the CSS properties are styles so the selector concept is just exist in the internal style sheet and in the external style sheet because it is used to identify the element on which we want to apply the style here if I want to apply the style on the paragraph then we have to write the P so P will P selector paragraph selector apply the style on all the paragraphs in the body if we want to apply the style on the div so we need to write the div it will apply style on all the divs in this HTML page but if we want to apply the style on different elements like paragraph and heading so how we need to write it just write a comma and then write h1 and if we want to apply the style on div then write another comma and then write the div so this style will apply on all these elements so this is the selector but how to write the selector in the external style sheet the external style sheet also have the same method like in the internal style sheet here if we want to apply the style on paragraph write P and then parentheses and then we have to write the style and if we want to apply on more than one elements then write h1 like div like any other HTML element so writing the method of writing the selector and applying the style is same in the external and the internal style sheet but here in the inline style sheet we don't need to write any selector why because here we have already applying the style on a single element here like paragraph so here we don't need to uh, write the selector because we don't need to select any element here we write the selector because we have to select the element in the HTML page and now the next thing is the CSS syntax how to write the CSS sy syntax here in the selector we have to write the CSS syntax CSS properties or style we can also say it, the CSS style so first of all write the property name then we have to write the column colon and then we have to write the property value here is the value and then we have to write the semicolon so this semicolon and the instruction you have already know that every programming language have the semicolon to end the instruction and then we are able to write another property and their value and the semicolon so this is a way of writing the CSS syntax and in the external style sheet the same method of CSS syntax exists here first of all we have to write the property name then the colon then value and then the semicolon and then we are able to write the next value then next property uh, so you can write the CSS properties as many as you want so I hope you understand my lecture if you have any problem so kindly add the discussion on Udemy I will help you as much as I can Thank you for watching this video. In my next video, I'm going to discuss how to add the background color and background images and how to set the background, how to apply different styles on the background. See you in the next lecture.
Hi guys, in this lecture I am going to teach you how to apply the different background on the HTML page. Here you see that this is just a white background. So now I am going to give the different colors to this, this background and then I give the image background to this white screen. So now let's start. First of all here I am going to give the background to the body here what we need to do we need to write the style that is the internal style sheet here is the style and in between these tags we need to write the body selector I'm gonna apply the style on full body I'm gonna apply the background color background color and then then we need to write the colon and then we are able to write any name of the color here I'm gonna write red and so now here it's become red and here we are also able to write the hexadecimal color code here write the hash and then we have to, I'm gonna write this code and this code is uh, this code is for maybe for yellow or red so it is for red and I'm gonna add NF so now it is for yellow here you can see that this is a hexadecimal code and you can also write the color value in the RGP values here write the RGP then we have to write the ve three values three number values from 0 to 255 here I'm gonna write the 0 a random value 255 so let's check this what is this color so here this is a color and now I am gonna give the background image so now here I'm gonna remove this and here write the background image property then colon and now here I'm gonna write URL and then the parentheses and then in between these parentheses we have to write the address name and extension of the image and here is a image whose extension is jpg and whose name is 1.jpg here write the 1.jpg and now execute it so here you can see that the image is repeat over all the screen here is the image and if we don't want to repeat the image then we have to write background repeat property and then we have to write no repeat so now let's check it so now the image is not going to repeat and if we want to repeat the image in a specific direction if we want to repeat the image in the x direction or in the x-axis so what we need to do we have to write repeat x here it is only repeating in the x-axis if we want to repeat in the y-axis or in the verti vertical direction so we have to write like this and if we want to repeat in both directions then we have to write repeat only here it is repeating the image in both directions x-axis and y-axis and now I am going to tell you about another property related to the image that is background position and before this here I am going to write no repeat so you can clearly understand the background position here write the background position property then colon and I am going to give it the value you can give it the value right top or the left top or the left bottom or the right bottom so now here I'm gonna give it the value right bottom right top so now let's check it so now the images appear in the right top corner and you can also give it the different values left bottom right bottom and the left top so now the we can also give it the value in the numbers you can give it the value of the x-axis is 100 pixel so now it is shown with the distance of 100 pixel in the x-axis and the 50 pixel distance in the y-axis 
here you can see that it is 100 pixel in the x-axis and the 50 pixel in the y-axis and you can also give it the value in the percentages here is a hundred percent and here is a fifty percent in the y-axis now let's check it and here you can see that this is the value and it has many changed effect and the next thing is the background size so what is the background size you can fix the size of the image in the background so now here I'm gonna edit this and give it the size and you can give it the predefined values first is cover so it cover all the screen so here you can see that it cover all the screen and you can also give it contain so here you can see that uh, the contain have created just a little picture in the page so now I'm gonna zoom in here is the picture here you can see that this is a picture the contain value is just used when you want to show the picture the picture is just fin fit inside the canvas so you can also write the hundred percent width and the height is automatically adjusted so now the picture is spread down all over the screen you can also give the height is also 100% so here you can see that here is the picture and you can also give the pixel uh, values in the pixel 100 pixel height and 100 pixel width first is width second is height and here is the image and the next thing is the background attachment so now what is the background attachment for this I am gonna create some paragraphs in the body here I'm gonna create a paragraph here is the paragraph tag now I'm gonna copy the paragraph from the Wikipedia Wikipedia and here is the Wikipedia and here I'm gonna copy this paragraph copy and paste it here so now this is just a simple paragraph and now I'm gonna paste it many more times now let's execute it and we have to paste it many and more times so now so now this is the way so now here you can see that here I'm gonna remove the background size this is just for the background attachment property so now let's watch it here is the picture and when we scroll down the page so here you can see that the picture is also scroll along with the paragraph or in other words the picture is picture will be hide when we scroll the page so if we want to fix the picture on the page whenever we scroll down the page the picture will be fixed and now we have to provide the background attachment property and here we have to write fixed and now let's execute it and here you can see that when we scroll down the page the picture is fixed on its place and you can also give it the value scroll so the picture is scroll along with the content this is the default value and here you have seen that the background have so many properties background color background image background repeat background attachment and also the background position and size which i have erased from this editor but we don't need to write all the values and the properties separately we have a shorthand property uh, in which we can give all the values 
here we what we need to do we have to write background and at the first we are able to give the color here I'm gonna give the color red and then we are able to give the image and here I'm gonna write 2.jpg and we are able to give the only one value between the color and the image but here I'm gonna show you example and then we are able to give the position of the image here I'm gonna give it the right top and then uh, forward slash and then we are able to give the size of the image and I'm gonna remove the position or you can also remove the size from here and then we have to give the re background repeat property value here I'm gonna give repeat and then the background attachment whose value is fixed and so now let's watch it here you can see that the color is apply but the image is repeat all over the body and it have the 100% size and the fixed attachment when we scroll down the page and uh, we can also remove any value from these values it's still working here you can see that so this is the way we can put the all the values in the one property and you can also give only one value if you want to give only one value here we can only give we are able to only give the color so it's not going to create any problem and I hope you understand my lecture if you have any problems so kindly add the discussion on Udemy I will help you as much as I can and in my next lecture I am going to discuss how to give the different style to the text so see you in the next lecture hi guys in this lecture I'm gonna teach you how to give the different styles to the text here I have already copy a paragraph here is a paragraph and I have already write these style tags and now I'm going to apply the style on this paragraph different styles write the paragraph selector and then first of all I'm going to change the color of the paragraph here render it in the browser here when we load the file so this text have the black color and I am going to give it a color of blue now let's look at it and we can also give it the text align if we give it text align you can align the text to the left center and the right here I'm gonna give it the right so now all the text is aligned to the right side here you can see that the text is skip from this side to this side and you can also align the text to the center and you can also align the text to the left so here you can see that the text is moved from this side to this side and you can the default value is the left side so you can check it on your own and you can also give it the value justify so what is the justify here I'm gonna copy this paragraph and increase the paragraph lines just so you can understand it clearly so now save it and render it here you can see that every paragraph line have the equal width every paragraph line have the equal width and this is called the justify effect so here I'm gonna remove it so then you can uh, understand it clearly here let's look at it so here you can see that all the lines have not the equal width so when we apply it so all the lines have the equal width here and you can also give it another property that is the text decoration here is the text decoration and you can decorate the text by giving it the value under line if we give it underline so the text is become underline here you can see that if we give the overline value the text is overline 
here you can see that the text uh, the line is on the upper side of the lines and you can also write the line through and here is the lines uh, over the text and you can also write the value the none so there is no uh, style on it now let's check it this is a default value and you can also apply another property that is the text transform here is the text transform and you can give it the value uppercase so all the letters are converted into the uppercase here here you can see that all the letters are become uppercase and if we give it lowercase so all the letters is become lowercase and we can also give it the value capitalize so capitalize make the first letter of every word capital here you can see that first letter capital and you can also give it the value text indent so the space is added on the first line here I'm going to give it 50 pixel here you can see that there is no space in the first line but here the space is created that is text indent and you can also apply the property line height so the line heights are increased here I'm going to give it 30 pixel then you here you can see that the line heights are not much here the distance is created in the lines and you can also give the letter spacing so the spaces are created between the letters here is the 10 pixel so here you can see that the spaces are created in between the letters you can also give the word spacing now the spaces are created in between the words and you can also uh, specify the direction of the text here I'm going to write the direction there are two values of the direction first is that is default left to right I'm going to give it right to left RTL stands for right to left so now here you can see that all the text is started from the right to left here you can see that this line sh clearly shows the text is started from this point and you can also give the value that is the white space so what is the white space the white space remove the white space between the lines and the in other words it removes the new lines in the paragraph here I'm gonna give it no wrap value so now let's check it here you can see that the paragraph is in the single line and we cannot see it if you have any problems so kindly add the discussion on Udemy I will help you as much as I can thank you for watching this video in my next in my next video I'm gonna discuss how to apply the different font size font family and different font effects on the text see you in the next video hi guys in this lecture you will be learning how to give the different font styles uh, to the text so first of all here this paragraph have uh, some ugly font so first of all I am gonna change the font of this text so how to change the font here I'm gonna write the font family so what is the font family in the font family you are able to give uh, more than one font so if one font is not exist in the computer then the second font will automatically execute first of all I'm gonna give the Tahoma then write the comma and then I'm going to give the Arial and if Arial is not exist I'm gonna give the Times New Roman but here Times New Roman this sentence have three words so we have to write these words in the inverted commas times new Roman
and then semicolon so now let's execute it and oops I have forget to add the selector and here I'm going to apply this font family on the paragraph and now let's execute it here the font is changed this is to homa font and we are also able to give it the font size here is the font size is I'm gonna give it 5 pixel or 20 pixel so now its font size is increased and here I want to tell you another thing that is EM so what is the EM 1 EM is equal to 16 pixel and you can also give the font size in the EM you can give the 2 EM that is 32 pixel 3 EM 4 EM so now the next thing is the font style font style is italic oblique normal so I'm gonna give it italic now let's execute it here it's become metallic and you can also give it oblique here it's become oblique it is just like the italic and the default is normal you can also give it the normal value and you can also give the font weight what is the font weight the font weight uh, contain the values uh, what is the font weight it is bold bolder lighter what is here I have give the bold we are able to give the bolder here it's become bolder and you can also give it the lighter and you can also give the values in the numbers here it is lighter lighter and you can also give it the numbers from the 100 to the thousand no no it's uh, its values is from the 100 to the 900 here is the effect and you can also give another property that is font variant so what is the font variant the font variant is a property when we give the normal value the text is normal if we give the small caps so all the small or the lowercase letters are converted into the uppercase and the letters that is already uppercase or have, have the font size greater than the converted letters so now let's an, render the page so here you can see that all the letters are uppercase but the previous or uh, uppercase letters have the greater font size and you can also give it the value normal so the text is become normal and the next thing is the shorthand property you don't need to use all the properties you can give all the values or the values what you want in the single line here first of all you are able to give the font style I'm gonna give it italic and you can also give it the font variant and then the font weight and then you are you have to give the font size here is a 16 pixel and then you are also able to give the line height after the forward slash but here I'm gonna give the Tahoma font family but I have write only one font so this is the way we can give the different values uh, I hope you enjoy my lecture if you have any problems so kindly add the discussion on Udemy I will help you as much as I can thank you for watching this video hi guys in this lecture I'm going to teach you the priority of the style sheets and how to add the comment in CSS and the classes and the how to give the different style to the HTML list so first of all let's start how to add the comment in CSS so first of all you have already know what is the comment the comment is just used to describe the code it is used to give the detail and it is not rendered in the browser when browser start executing the program the browser ignore the comment so how to add the comment in the internal style sheet here I'm gonna add the comment first of all 
we are able to write any text then we have to write static and forward slash so now this is a comment this is a way of adding the comment first of all we have to write the forward slash static and then at the end static and forward slash so now the next thing is the priority of the style sheet style sheets uh, so now here I'm gonna apply uh, the same style by using all the three methods on this paragraph so now here first of all I'm gonna apply the style and here in this I'm gonna write a style I'm going to give it the color red here this inverted comma is extra it is also extra here we have to write colon so now I have give the color to this paragraph is red by using the inline style sheet and then here I'm gonna create a selector and then give it the color yellow and now I am going to link to a style sheet I have already created here I'm gonna give a link to that style sheet and then open it here relate style sheet type here is the text for which I CSS and then hyper reference and then style dot CSS and now I'm going to open it here style.css so now here I am also gonna apply the same style on the paragraph the color and here I am going to give the color is purple so now uh, all of these three style sheets are applying different color on this paragraph so now the question is this what color is apply on this paragraph here let's execute it here you can see that red color is applied the red color is from the inline style sheet so the first when we apply the same style by using all three style sheets the first priority is of the in, inline style sheet the inline style sheets style sheet have the greater priority as compared to the internal and the external style sheet so at the first this inline style sheet execute then the internal style sheet execute and then the external style sheet execute so this will happen when all three style sheets have the same properties but if the style sheets have the different properties so the this priority cannot be apply this priority is apply only on those properties that are same in all these three style sheets here I'm gonna apply the font family here is the Tahoma so now this font family property exists only in this style sheet so now let's execute it and you will see that the font is changed because this property is not present on all these three style sheets and here I'm gonna apply the background and yellow background so now this property also apply on the paragraph here is the background is because this property is not present on all these three style sheets so the priority is not applied so here I want to tell you another thing here I'm gonna remove this font family and remove this background color and now I will show you another thing that is if we edit uh, if we cut this link to the external style sheet and paste it under the internal style sheet so here I'm gonna remove the internal uh, inline style sheet so now what will happen the second priority is of the internal style sheet but now here the external style sheet style is apply on this paragraph the color is become purple why because the internal style sheet have the second priority and the external style sheet have the third priority beside this uh, the external style sheet is below the internal style sheet 
and it execute after the internet style sheet so we have to paste the link of the external style sheet always above the internet style sheet so the priority is correct you have to adjust these things now the next thing is the classes what is the classes here I'm gonna create two paragraphs and then apply the different styles on these paragraphs here I'm gonna remove the external style sheet and remove this link and now here I'm gonna copy this paragraph and paste it here so now here are two paragraphs executed and now I am gonna apply the background color on the first paragraph here I have write the background property and then here I have write the red and I have also write the selector but now what happened here you can see that the background color is apply on both paragraphs why because this paragraph selector select all paragraphs in the HTML page so now what we need to do we have to give the class what is the class the class is the identity which we are able to give to any HTML element and then the or then an HTML element have their identity so we can uh, recognize any HTML element with their class so now here I'm gonna give it a class here here we have to write the class in the starting tag of the, any HTML element then we have to write the inverted commas and then we have to write any text but here I'm gonna write first and here I'm also gonna give a class here I'm gonna write class inverted commas and here is the second so now this class uh, this paragraph have the identity second and this have the first you can write any text and now I'm gonna use these identities to give the different properties here what we need to do we need to use these classes as the selector here we have to write the classes starting with the dot we have to write we must need to write the dot before the class name dot first and then we are able to provide the background properties and here I'm gonna write the second class dot second and then here its background color is different its background color is become the yellow so now let's execute it and here you see that both have the different colors because we have given the classes and we have used the classes as the selectors so now we are also able to use the classes to give the same properties to both paragraphs or to the different elements here I am gonna create a heading here is a heading which have a random text here is the h1 if we provide the same classes to all of these elements so we can apply the same properties to all of these elements or we can apply the same style on all these three elements here I am gonna change the name to the first this paragraph also have the class name first and here I am also gonna give the class name first you can give the same classes to any number of elements you can give the same classes to different HTML elements you can give the different classes to the different HTML elements you can give the different classes to the same HTML elements so now here all these have the first class so now all the HTML elements have the background red so now execute so all HTML elements have the background red so this is the way of using the class 
so i hope you understand how to use the class and the next thing is the list how to give the different styles to the list so now i'm going to remove it and here i am also going to remove these paragraphs and here i am going to create two list here is the unordered list and it has the li and here is the t and here i'm going to edit it to the coffee and here is the milk and here is the sugar so now i'm going to give the different styles by using the css to this list now execute it so it have the dot or the bullets index so now what we need to do we just need to write ul and then parentheses in these parentheses we are able to write list style type the list style type is the bullets or the index here we can change these bullets to the scare so the scare are created here are the scares you can see that scares now here i'm going to give the disk so the disks are present here execute it so here are the disks and you can also give it the value circle so the circle will be present here are the circles and you can also give it the value none so there is no bullets or scare or anything and you can also give the image at the place of the index here i'm going to give the list style image here url and then in between these parentheses we have to give inverted commas and here we need to write one dot jpg might be this picture will load here this picture is too large so here is the t have this image as a index and here is another picture you can give the small pictures instead of these large pictures and now i'm going to create the order list here is the order list and now execute it so here are the one to three are present so we can edit this we can give the list style type here i'm going to remove it you can give the list style type first of all edit it to all and give the value list style type is upper roman here is the upper roman so now let's execute it so now it is upper roman we can also give it the lower roman and now i'm going to give it upper alpha so there is a capital letters here is the upper alpha alpha have the wrong spelling alpha so that's why it cannot execute so here are the upper case capital letters you can also give it the lower alpha so there are lower case letters you can also give it the value decimal so there are letters are present sorry it's not letters its numbers are present 1 2 3 here i'm going to write decimal so there are numbers and you can also give it leading zero so all the numbers have the zero at the start here are the zeros and now you can also put the none value here i'm going to give it the none value and there is nothing present and you can also put the image list style image here what you need to do you need to write the url and then write the name and the extension of the file here is the 2.jpg and let's 
load it here are the images are present here you can see that so this is the way we can give the different style to the HTML list and in my next lecture I'm going to discuss the border how to add the border how to add the outline how to add the padding margin so see you in the next lecture thank you for watching this video hi guys in this lecture I'm going to teach you how to add the border outline margin padding and dimension what are these terms let's discuss these terms first of all I want to tell you about the border so what is the border the border is just a boundary all the HTML elements have the boundary like a paragraph div span and the heading and all every HTML element have the border so we cannot see the border clearly because we have not uh, defined the values for the border the border is not visible to us we have not created the border so now first of all here I'm gonna copy a paragraph from the previous file here I'm going to open the previous file and here is and copy this paragraph so now paste it here here create the paragraph tags here is the p paste it here so now what we need to do let's render it here in the browser you can see that there is a not a boundary of this paragraph there is not any line so now we are gonna define the line or we can also say that boundary border so what we need to do first of all we need to write the border style what are the border style the border style is solid the next thing is the border width The border width I'm gonna give it three pixel and then the border border color what is the color of the border so here I'm gonna give the red color so first of all this is the width of the line three pixel and the style style is just like a solid uh, I have given the value solid solid is just create a straight line so let's execute it so here you see that this is a solid style it is just straight line and you can also give the different values to it and the width and the color will not work without the style and you can also give the different values here I'm gonna give the dashed so now it's become dashed and now it's become visible here I'm gonna check the spelling double here we have to write double so now let's execute it so here are the border is become double and you can also able to provide dot it so now, I, now lines are is become dot it and here is the groove so it have another effect and you can also apply ridge thin thick medium and you can also give the colors in the RGB values code and now I am gonna show you a shorthand property here what we need to do we are able to put all these properties in the single property first of all we need to put the width then the style here I have put the solid and then the color here I am gonna put yellow and now execute it so now it's become yellow here you can see that this is yellow and now the next thing is the outline so what is the outline here I'm gonna make it in the comment so what is the outline the outline is outside the border the outline is just like a line outside of the border we can also call it uh, it is the border outside the border it is a boundary outside the boundary so what we need to do we just need to change 
the border with the outline 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 also have the style and it have the same values as the border it also have the width we have to give the width in the pixels and it also have the color just like the border and it also have the shorthand property like this so now first of all I am going to execute these upper lines so here you can see that so this is the outline first of all here I am going to place a border so here I'm gonna give the style solid so you can watch it clearly so here you can see that yellow is a border and the red is the outline here you can see that red color is of outline and you can also give a shorthand property of the outline just like the border what we need to do we just need to change the word border with the outline it also have the width and the, then the style and then the color it is just like the border and the next thing is the margin what is the margin the margin is just a space uh, the margin is used to adjust the content in the web page here I'm going to show you a website CNN of course so now open a... so now here you can see that uh, here is this is a sidebar and this is a content area so here you can see that this content area this images have the space on its right side so this is a margin here this sidebar have the space on its left side so here is the margin so this margin is used to adjust the content in the website it is the space outside the border so now here I'm gonna remove the outline and here change its color to the red and now you are able to create the space from the upper side from the left side right side and the bottom side and now first of all I'm gonna change the zoom percentage so now first of all I'm gonna create the margin top it create the space on the upper side 10 pixel so now watch it it's less so I'm going to increase it to the 50 pixel so here you see that here the space is created this is the margin top you can also create the margin left so execute it so here the space on the left side this is the margin left you can also create the space on the right side here is the space on the right side and you can also give the space on the bottom side and to view the space of the bottom side you have to write some text below it so you can clearly watch the space on the bottom side so here you can watch this space is created on the bottom side so the text appear here and you don't need to write all of these four margins you can also give all of these four values in the single line here what you need to do just write margin and then first of all you need to give if you give the four values then the first value is for the top side 20 pixel is the top side then the left side then the 30 pixel is for the bottom side and then the 40 pixel is for the right side so now let's execute it so here it is adjusted with the new values I'm gonna make it in the comment previous values so if we give only three values to it then the first value is for the top side the second value is for the right and left the third value is for the bottom and if we give only two values the first value is for the top and bottom the second value is for the right and left 
and if we give only one value so this value is for all sides here execute and see the effect so the next thing is the padding so what is the padding the padding is the space inside the border here you can see that uh, there is no space inside the border the content is very close to the border so we're gonna create the space inside the border what we we are able to create the space from all over the four sides so now first of all I'm going to create the space from the top side we have to write padding top here I'm going to give 10 pixel from the top it is the space inside the border here you can see that this is this space is the outside the border this is margin and inside the border this is padding and we can also give the left side here is the left side and here is the right side and then the bottom side here let's watch it here the space are created from all over the four sides all of these paddings in one line by using the padding property and then if we give the four values first is for the top side second is for the left side the third is for the bottom side and the fourth is for the right side and now let's look at it so here the space is increased and if we give only three values so the first values for the top second values for the right and left and the third values for the bottom and if we give two values first is for the top and the bottom the second values for the right and left and if we give only one value then it give this value to all the four sides so this is the padding and the next thing is the CSS dimensions so what is the CSS dimensions here I am going to make all of these things in the comment here let's execute it here is the paragraph but here you can see that this paragraph have not the specific height and width you can also able to give it the height and width here I'm going to give it the height and width 200 pixel height and the width is 300 pixel execute it so here this is the paragraph here border defines its height and the width the content is overflow we are able to increase its height so now it is adjusted so now we are also able to give it the maximum height if we give the maximum height so its height cannot be increased more than the maximum height here we have the height that is 500 but if we give the maximum height that is 400 so its height is become 400 here you can see that its height is reduced it's become 400 we can also give it maximum width so now its height its maximum width is 400 but if we reduce it to 200 pixel and we have give it width 300 pixel so now its width is reduced because its maximum width is defined and we can also give the minimum height and the maximum height so the minimum height is used uh, when we open any website in the mobile or on the short screen also the minimum width is for the short screen when we uh, uh, many users today open the website on the short screens then it will give the comfort for the mobile users minimum height so I hope you understand my lecture if you have any problems so kindly add the discussion on Udemy I will help you as much as I can in my next lecture I am going to discuss how to give the different styles to the table and how to the div and to the HTML five elements header footers and other elements so see you in the next lecture
Hi guys, in this lecture you will be learning the CSS dimension, how to give the different values to the CSS dimensions like width and height and we are gonna give uh, the percentage, the values are in the percentage and the fixed value. So here I have already created a heading and its background color is red. So here you can see that it is spread all over the screen. So now we can also give it the width and the height if we give the width is 80 percent you can give the width in the percentages so now it covers the only 80 percent screen if we give the 60 percent then it covers the 60 percent you can give any value 62 63 1 percent 2 percent that you want but here if we give the height and if we give the 20 percent so it, it's not going to show any effect on it because it will show the effect under special circumstances but here you can also give it the different values to these height and width if you give auto to both of these so the height and width of this h1 element heading element automatically adjusted as we put the content inside the heading or in other words you can also say that when we give the height and width auto so the height or width will be automatically adjusted according to the content of that element we can also say that if we give auto value to the height or the width then the height or the width of that element will be adjusted automatically according to the content inside that element so here I'm going to increase the content so now its height is automatically adjusted here you can see that and its width is also increased because we have given the value auto so it is adjusted according to the auto value so this is the way we can use the fixed values so I hope you understand this lecture if you have any problems so kindly add the discussion on Udemy I will help you as much as I can thank you for watching this video hi guys in this lecture I am going to teach you uh, this value of a margin that is the special value of the margin that is 0 pixel auto and how it works so now here I have already created a div and here is the text inside the div and now I'm going to give it the border here is the border is one pixel solid and then here is the red color now let's execute it so here is the border is apply and now I'm gonna give it width here is the width is 100 pixel white and height is 100 pixel so now let's look at it so here it look like this so now I'm going to increase its width to the 600 pixel so now let's here here you can see that uh, this div is in the left corner but if you want to align or you want to set the position of the div at the center of the page in the x-axis or you can also say that you can you want to align the div at the center in the horizontal direction so you have to write margin margin then 0 pixel then auto and it will be set this div in the center in the x-axis and you can also give it the background color and many other properties then you can watch it clearly here is the yellow so now let's look at it so in this way you can set the div to the center so I hope you enjoy this lecture if you have any problems so kindly add the discussion on Udemy I will help you as much as I can so thank you for watching this video hi guys in this lecture we are gonna learn the display property that is the CSS property and now let's start uh, but before this here I want to tell you something that what is the display property the display property is used to change the display 
I have already tell you the block level elements and the inline elements. So what is the block level elements that are shown as a block as a container and it have the new line before and after it and it cover the full space on the screen and we can change the display of these elements. We can show the block level elements as the inline elements and the inline elements as the block level elements by using the display property but before this i want to tell you something that is block level elements and the inline elements properties or you can say that the identifications of the block level elements and the inline elements so now here i have already created this page its name is display.html this time it is different and here is the body and here is the html element head style and here is its render page and now here i'm gonna copy a paragraph from the wikipedia here is this paragraph little paragraph and here in the body i have pasted it and now first of all I'm going to show you what is the block level element exact. In the HTML section, I have teach you the block level elements and the inline, inline elements without the CSS. But now I'm going to teach you with the CSS. So your concept is going to be clear more. So here I'm going to enclose this line in the paragraph in the this line is now a paragraph we have enclosed it inside the paragraph so now let's render it and here you see that this line have the new line before and after it so it means it is a block level element the paragraph is a block level element here when we remove these paragraph tags so now it is just a simple paragraph and when we apply these tags so now this line have the complete new line before and after it so this is the block level element and the second uh, identification of the block level element here i'm going to apply the border on this paragraph here is border one pixel solid here is red and here it is so here you see that we have applied this border on a paragraph but it will be apply on the complete line or you can see that you can say that the block level elements is display as a box it is display as a container uh, it will cover the full spray space in front of it it will cover the hundred percent width and we can also give the height and width to the block level elements here i'm going to give it the width here is 20 pixel and now the border is reduced so now there are three identifications of the block level element it have the new lines before and after it it will cover the complete space and it have we can give it the width and height and now here i'm going to tell you about its display property here is the display property by using this display property we can change the display of the paragraph here you can see that this is as a block so this is the default value for this paragraph the paragraph have the display block value but we can give it other values that is the inline values but before this I'm gonna show you what is the inline here is I'm gonna enclose this text now in the span the span is an inline element here is span and here is span span and here i'm going to remove it this value is for the paragraph here i want to tell you another thing that paragraph heading and the div or the block level elements and the span anchor tag image is a inline elements and here it is so now here you see that the text that is inside the span is display as a simple text inside the border it have not the full space it have not the new line and we cannot able to give the width to the span here i'm going to give it 
the 200 pixel but it is not going to be applied on it so now you can see that this is the identifications of an inline element it have not new nine it will not cover all the space on the screen we cannot give it the width and height and now this is okay and now we are going to change the display here this span have the display value inline because it is inline element but we are going to change it I'm go going to make this span as a block level element so how to do this here is we have to change its value here we have to give it block so now this span is become the block level element here you see that it is shown on the second line and it will cover all the space on the screen and it is on the new line and now we are also able to give it the width here is the width is 200 pixel here it is so now this is called the display property this is the method to change the display of any element and now you can apply all the block level element properties on this span the block level elements have the property we can give it the width we can you have the new lines before and after it but here the new lines are not present before and after this block this span and then there is another property for is it will cover all the space on the screen because we have given it the width so that's why it is not covering all the space but it is it can cover so now this is the method to make an inline element into a block level element and here I'm gonna make it again an inline element here it is so now it is simple and now here I'm gonna make this span a paragraph and then this is a block level element and now I'm gonna change it into the inline element here is display and here is and here I'm gonna render it so now it is a block level element and here I'm gonna give it in line and then it have no new line before and after it and uh, you it will not cover full space and you cannot give it the width and height here is the width I'm gonna give it the width but it is not going to be apply because now it is an inline element but it when we apply the default property on it block so all the properties are going to be work because it will become the block level elements so this is the way to make a block level element into an inline element and then a inline element into a block level elements then they will interchange their properties completely and now here I'm gonna tell you about the third one value of this display that is inline block and what is the inline block we can give the inline block value to any element to a block level element and we can also give this value to an inline element and here is first of all I'm gonna give this value to the block level element so now this block level element also have the properties of the inline here it is so now its properties are following uh, it have no new line before and after it it have no uh, it will not cover the full space on the screen but it have one property that is belong to the block level element that is the we can give it the width and height and it will be applied here is no new line no full covering space and here we can give it the width and height this property is from the block level elements and the other properties are from the inline element and here it is and now you can also apply this inline block property on the span when we apply this inline block value on the span so it have the same properties 
it will not have the new line before and after it it will not cover the full space and you can give it the width and height so this is the way to make uh, to change the display properties and to change the display and here i want to tell you another thing that anchor tag anchor tag is also in line element and we cannot give it the width and height whenever we want to give it the width and height we have to apply the inline block or we have to apply the block value on it so if you have any problems so kindly add the discussion i will help you as much as i can so thank you for watching this video i will see you in the next video hi guys in this lecture i am going to teach you how to give the different styles to the table uh, how to give it color how to give it the width and height and then i will teach you how to give the different styles to the div and the html5 elements so here i have already created a table here is the table heading table data and here it, it's render form so now i'm going to give it different style first of all i'm going to give the style to the whole table th and the td what is this guess it it is the border the table have not the border so it's look ugly solid and then here is the color is black so now let's look at it so now it have the border but here you can see that this border is double so we have to provide the border collapse collapse property border collapse property collapse so now execute it and here are the lines and now i am going to give it the width here you can see that it is only in the left corner but here i am going to give it 100% width it's spread on all over the screen only to the table width is 100% and now let's check it so here are the 100% and now I am going to give some style to the table heading here I am going to give it the background color the background color is the I am going to give it green so here it's become green the table heading and then i'm going to give it the height here i'm going to give it 150 pixel look at it here is little mistake execute it and here is table heading have too much height so i am going to adjust it to the 100 so now here is its height so then i am going to give it text align text align to the left so now it is aligned to the left and you can also give it to the center and vertical align to the top then it is at the top in the vertically here and now I'm going to give the style to the table data here is the table data here I'm first of all give it the padding 10 pixel and let's execute it so here the space inside the table data is increased now I am going to give the different styles to the div because uh, I have already teach you how to give the colors and the fonts you can you are able to give it some other styles and you can give it on your own now I am going to give the different styles to the div so you have already know why we use the div the div is used to manage the content and now i'm going to give the style to the div here i'm going to give it 
in a comment. So now here at the top we have to place the paragraph. Here is the paragraph and I am going to copy this paragraph from the CNN. Here open any post and copy the paragraph. Here is this paragraph and paste it here. So now this paragraph I'm going to place it in the div so now I'm going to add some styles on this paragraph here is the paragraph here I'm going to add some styles at the end here here first of all selector is the div and here I'm gonna apply the color on the text here is the color is become red and the border the border is one pixel solid and its color is black now div have only two styles let's execute it here its color is become red and now I am going to give it font family you can also apply the font family and all the styles here I'm going to give only one you can also give it font size here the font size is 14 pixel let's execute it here you can see that and now I'm gonna give it background color background color is green or yellow here is the background color and the next thing is the margin you can also give it the margin so the margin is created around the div here I'm gonna give it 50 pixel or you can also give it uh, the zero pixel auto so what is the function of the zero pixel auto the zero pixel auto move the div into the center of the page here I'm gonna give the width and the height to the div then you will watch it clearly here is a 200 pixel and height is 300 pixel height is 500 so now you will watch uh, the effect of margin 0 pixel auto here you can see that uh, the margin 0 pixel auto moves the div in the center of the page here you can see that I am going to reduce the height to the 300 pixel here is the div here I'm going to check the closing tag of div here and you can also increase the height of the div and you can also give it many properties like padding here I'm going to give it padding you can also able to give it outline um, you can apply all the CSS properties on the div and you can apply all these CSS properties on any HTML element all the CSS properties will work with the div so now I am gonna apply the style on the HTML5 elements so let's start here I'm gonna make it in the comment HTML5 semantic elements um, also used to manage the content and it is also used to make the page structure the div is also used to manage the content 
and it is also used to contain other HTML elements HTML5 elements are also used for this purpose so all the CSS properties are implemented on the HTML5 elements that we have applied on the div or we can apply on other elements here I am going to edit the div to the header and here edit this to the header so now this paragraph is in the header here you can watch this so now here if we edit the selector to the header so now all these properties will apply on this here you can see that all the properties are apply on the header the background color the color font size font family border padding margin all the properties are apply on the header so this is the way you can apply these properties on the footer make it in the footer and here and execute it so here this is the footer it also have the color background properties and all the properties and using this way mm, or you can create the section article main and all the HTML5 elements and put the content in those elements and you can apply these CSS properties here I have show the header and the footer these are working for the CSS properties you can also put these properties on the aside navigate nav tag and also many other tags now here I'm gonna create an anchor tag and then we will give it the background and the padding and the border and all the things its purpose is that you can give the style to the anchor tags here is uh, anchor tag and here I'm gonna write pitbull and now here I'm gonna see you how it look like so here is the this and now here I'm gonna give it the styles and here what we need to do here I'm gonna copy these first five styles font family font size background color and the border color of the text and here it is and in this way you can give the style to the anchor tag and the next thing is the padding you can also give the padding to the anchor tag here is the padding and here I'm gonna increase it here it is and the next thing that I want to tell you you are not able to give the width and height to the anchor tag because its default display property is the inline it have not a new line before and after it so that's why we cannot able to uh, give it width and height but there is another method by using that method you can give the width and height to the anchor tag that is if we give the display inline block to the anchor tag so then it will be okay so what is the display inline block here I'm gonna show you first of all we have to write display and then here I'm gonna change its display settings here is we have to write display block you have already I have already tell you about the inline elements and the block elements inline elements are those who have not uh, displays as the block it have not the new and new lines before and after it and the block line elements block level elements are those who have the new lines before and after it so that's why now this anchor is uh, anchor tag is inline element by default and now we have give it inline block so what is the function of the inline block in the when we give it the inline block so this anchor tag is shown as the inline block element its mean is it is shown as a block so now we can give it the width and height but it is still in line it have not the new lines before and after it here you see that it have not any new line before and after it so it means that it is still in line 
uh, or you can say that it is 50% inline, 50% block and now we can give it width and height. Here I'm going to give it 300 pixel. So now its width is going to be increased. Here it is. But if we remove this display, so it will not work. Here you see that it will not work. So the, in this way you can give it the height. Now I'm going to give the style to the image. Here I'm going to insert the image. You can give it height, width and the border here is source and 4 dot jpg and now here I'm going to write img selector and here is width here is the width 300 pixel I'm going to increase its width and before this I will show you how it look like and here is height and here is the border 1 pixel solid and here is black and now first of all I'm gonna cut it then you can see the image normally here is the image and now when I apply this style so the image width and height is changed here it is it have the black border so in this way you can give the style to the image and tag and all the things so thank you for watching this video i will see you in the next video please if you have any problem add a discussion i will help you as much as i can thank you for watching this video hi guys in this lecture i am going to teach you how to give the id to the elements what is the id and the second thing is the float how to float the elements in html uh, by using the css so first of all here i'm gonna create the two divs here is the first div and here is this here i'm gonna paste a paragraph from the previous uh, lecture copy this and paste it in between this div and then I am going to copy this div and create another div here is the div so now here I'm going to use the ID so what is the ID like uh, the ID is the ID is just like the class uh, here the class is used to give the different styles to the elements or the same styles to the elements so the id is also used for the same purpose so now here how to write the id here in the starting tag we can give id to any html element here equal and then double quotes and here and then we are able to write any name here I'm gonna write the first and now I am gonna give the ID to the second div here is the second and then we are able to use these IDs how to use the ID first of all we uh, first of all these IDs are now the identity of the divs first ID first ID identify the first div second id identify the second div so first of all i'm gonna give the different styles by using the both ids to these divs so first of all in the class we write the dot in the id we need to write the hash write the first then sem then the parentheses and then here in between these parentheses we need to write the properties here I'm gonna write the color red first div have the color red and the second div here write the hash and then parentheses and here is the color and yellow so now let's execute it here you can see that this is the first div this is the second div so the id has just the same purpose uh, we can give the same style by using the id you can also give it 
the first so the same style will apply on the div id just used for giving the id to any html element to give it styles to give it different style same style and now uh, i want to show you uh, another thing that is float element so what is the float element let discuss it here i'm going to create the border of both of these divs border one pixel solid black and i'm going to copy this and paste it here and now let's execute it so both divs are here and i'm going to change the color of the text to blue here we need to change the id to the second and now execute it so here this is the second div and this is the first div so now i'm going to give it width and height to both only width height is automatically adjusted width is 200 pixel or increase it 600 pixel so now here or this is the first div this is the second div so now this div is a line or it is float or move to the left both divs are moved to the left this is called the floating we are able to change the value of the float here i'm going to give the value to the float is right so the div is moved to the right corner first div is moved to the right corner here you can see that this is the first div it is moved to the right corner and you can also give it the left so the first div move to to the left corner and you can also give the float left to both of these divs here I'm going to give it left so now let's execute it so here this is the first div this is the second div both divs are float to the left the white space is covered by the div and so now here I want to show you another thing when we give the float uh, to the only one element so the second here the, so the second element automatically float to the left and covers the uh, space of the first element here I'm gonna show this effect by giving the background color to this element second element which have not the float property here I'm going to give it the red color and I'm going to give it the float first here is the left so here you see that both elements have the float property so it have the red background color it is on this side but if I remove the float from the this div so what happens here you see that this div uh, expand on all the area of the first div so what we need to do we need to write the clear both property so what is the clear both property the clear both property is used when the floated elements are mixed up so the clear both property uh, so here i'm going to give it value both so when we give it the value both so it cannot allow any div element or any floated element on its left or right side here check it here apply on this div so now here it's working we have to apply the clear property on that div on that HTML element which have not the float property so now what is happening when we give the clear property so it cannot allow any 
floated element on its left or right side so it is adjusted on its place and we can also give it the value left so the second div cannot allow any floated element on its left side and we can also give it value right so it cannot allow any floated elements on its right side so i hope you enjoy this lecture if you have any problems kindly add the discussion on udemy i will help you as much as i can in my next lecture i am going to discuss the positioning how to position an html element in the html web page see you in the next lecture hi guys welcome to this lecture in this lecture i am going to teach you how to give the different name to a single HTML element by using the class and the next thing is uh, what type of a name is best for the class here I'm going to tell you what what the things that a class name must not contain first of all here I'm gonna write a class and here write AB and here is dot AB in the name of the class you should need to write you are able to write upper uppercase and the lowercase letters and you are not allowed to write the special characters here I'm going to give it a background color here is red so now let's execute it so here the red background is applied but here if we write a special character at the rate and write it here so now the name is equal so here you can see that the style is not apply on this heading because the special character is written in the name of the class so in this way you don't need to write the special character in the name of the class you cannot also able to write the special character in the name of the ID both in in the class and the ID restrict the special characters and here another thing that is you are not allowed to write the numbers name to the class here if we write 76 so it will not work here is the 76 so here you can see that when we load it so the style is not applying on this heading so don't write a name to the class or to the id that is number don't give a number to the id or a class but here if we give the number in this way like a b 76 that is that is mixed with the lowercase letters so it will work here is the a b so now let's execute it so here it is working so in this way you can give the numbers with the letters but you we uh, but you are not allowed to write the numbers at the place of the first letter here if we write the number at the place of the letter first letter so it will also not work here you can see that it will not working here so in this way you have to give the numbers after the first letter and the first letter must be the lowercase or uppercase letter so now it's working so in this way you can give the name to the IDs and the class don't write the numbers at the first place and don't write the special characters in the name of the ID and the class here it is also working for the ID here is the hash let's check it so here it's working and you can also give the special character here then it will not work here is the special character so let's see here you can see that it is not working and the next thing is how to give the different name to a single single HTML element by using the class here I'm gonna write a class and then here I'm gonna remove it and here first of all I'm gonna give the name to this class is first but if we want to give another name to the class is 
write the space and then write the second word of the second name of the class and then add another space you can write the third name and also you can write the names as many as you want here I'm gonna write third and all of the previous rules are apply to these names don't write the special character in the name of the classes here then that name will not work and don't write the number at the first place of the name here you can apply different styles on it if we write dot first and here if we write dot second here if we write background orange background no I'm I'm not gonna give it a background because we have already given the background so now we are using two classes to give the different styles to the heading so now let's look at it so here you can see that the back red background is applied by using the first ID and the orange color is applied by using the second class name that is the second so here you can also use the third one here is right the third and here I'm gonna give it some padding here is the padding 20 pixel so now let's watch it here you can see that the spelling is incorrect so now let's watch it so here its width and height is increased so in this way you can give more than one name to the class but here I'm gonna add the special character into the first name so now the first name will not work that is the background but the padding and the color is working but here if we give the number at the start of the second name then it will also not work and if we provide another error in the third name then it will also not working so in this way you can give more than one name but here you have to write the space between the names here if we write like this here the underscore then this is just only one name this is not the two names first and second this is just one name here you can see that no style will be applied and here when we write like this then it will work here you can see that so you can also not able to give the name of the number here if we write like this 8 then here if we provide 8 then it will not work here you can see that here I'm gonna remove it then the background will be applied so here the background is applied by using the first class color is by using the second class but here it having the property padding it is not applying so in this way you can give the different names to the class but the ID have the only unique identity you cannot give more than one name to the ID because class have many names uh, first class third class second class or you can give any name to a class you can give any number of names to a class but the identity is unique every person in this world have the unique identity so in this HTML and CSS the ID also has the one value ID cannot contain more than one value here if we give ID ID so all of these IDs will not work here hash and here is also hash so all of these are not gonna work here you can see that but here if we write like this resolving the space so then we have to write it like this
here I'm going to remove it and then here write 8 second so now it will be working because it is a single ID so it contain only one value it cannot have more than one value so in this way you can handle the classes I hope you understand my lecture if you have any problem so kindly add the discussion on Udemy I will help you as much as I can so thank you for watching this video hi guys in this lecture you will be learning positioning so first of all what is the positioning you can use the positioning property to align or position any HTML element in any position at any position in the page so here I have already created a div and I have give it the background color width and the height and the border and now here I'm gonna create another div and then I will give it the position property then you can understand it clearly here it is this is the second div and now here I'm gonna give the class to this div right class and here I'm gonna give it a B class and then here to the second div I'm also gonna give it the class here it is a C class and now this style is going to be apply on a B here is the a B and now I'm gonna copy this style and then change it to give this style to the AC here it is and here is AC and now I'm gonna change its background color to the yellow and here I'm gonna give it 200 bit yellow have the 200 bit and here you see that this yellow div is present here but when we give the position property and then it have four values uh, so we can align it at any place we can change its position so first of all here is the position property to write position and then it have four values first value is static so static is the default value here you see that this diff have the static position it also have the static position so all the default positions of the HTML elements are the static position so we don't need to discuss the static position because it is the default now the second thing is the absolute it is important we will use it in the absolute value when we give the absolute value to any HTML element so the absolute so that HTML element will override other HTML element and we can place the HTML element at any place in the page it will be display on the top of the elements or in other words you can say that when we give uh, absolute value to any HTML element so that element can override any other HTML element so now I'm gonna give the absolute position to this yellow div and now let's start here I have given it absolute position and now I'm gonna align or uh, I'm gonna give it the different position here is I'm gonna we are able to give the top what is the distance from the top to this div here I'm gonna give 200 pixel or reduce it to 100 pixel and then we can also give the distance from the left side here I'm gonna give 30 pixel from the left side and then you can also give the distance from the bottom side here is I'm gonna give the 50 pixel and here is the distance from the right side so you can give the top left bottom and right distance to the all the four values of the position and here I'm gonna give 60 pixel and now let's watch it so here you see that now this div have that 100 pixel from the top 30 pixel from the left 50 pixel from the down 60 pixel from the right this is the effect of the absolute value so in 
so it can now you can see that it override this div or in other words you can say that you can also say that it cannot feel any effect of other html elements and now here i want to tell you something that the 200 pixel from the top is started from this boundary is started from this line and the 30 pixel from the left side is started from this boundary from on the left side and the bottom side is started from their boundary and right side distance is started from its boundary so all the distances are from its boundaries and now here i want to tell you another interesting thing that is the z index we can give the z index to show an html element on the top or below here you see that this yellow div is shown on the top and this red div is shown on the below so why it is show on the top this yellow because it have the greater z index it have the greater stack order and it have the lower so i'm gonna give the z index so we can show it on the top or the below here what we need to do we have to give we want to show this red div on the top so we have to give it the z index here i'm gonna give it z index you can write any number in the z index here i'm gonna write five you can write hundred seven hundred 10 or anything so now it red div have the 5z index so now we want to show this red div on the top of the yellow so that's why we have to give the lower z index to the yellow div here is here we have to give it lower value than the 5 here i'm gonna give it 4 so now this this yellow div so now this red div have the greater z in z index so that's why it shows on the top here it's not working why it's not working here we have to give the position absolute to both divs here i have not give to the red div so that's why so now it have the greater z index it have the lower so the greater z index is shown on the top here you see that this red div have the greater value so that's why it shows on the top and if we give it lower value than the 4 here you see that it have the 4 so now here it is it is shown on the top so now the second value third value is the relative in the relative when we give the relative position to any html element then that element move with respect to the first position in the absolute position you see that the this div is move from the boundaries it have the distance from their boundary it have the distance from the left side boundary so now when we give the relative position so the html element will be move from is from its last position and now here i'm gonna create uh, a html heading then you can understand it clearly here i'm gonna remove this here is remove it here i'm gonna make it in the heading here is the h1 and here it's i'm gonna also gonna change its opening tag and here i'm gonna increase it so now here are four or five headings and now here i'm gonna give it the class ac so now i'm gonna uh, change the position of this h1 class and here i'm gonna remove the style for the ab on all the headings and here i'm gonna cut this first i will show you simply here you see that here are the headings so now i'm gonna move this third heading i'm gonna move this third heading who have the ac class so now here i'm gonna give it here it is absolute it have the yellow background and all the things and here i'm gonna change its z index and in which in this 
relative position we can also we are able to give the top position left position bottom position and all the things first i'm going to remove it i'm going to remove these two things and now top have the 100 pixel and the left have the 30 pixel so now here you see that here i'm going to remove the background color then you can understand it clearly and now here is remove it and now here I'm gonna remove this top I will give these values later so now it have the relative position third heading and left from the 30 pixel and here you see that this heading is moved 30 pixel from the left but when we give the absolute position so the element will be moved according to the boundary or in other words when we give the absolute position so the element move uh, the distance or element increase or decrease the distance from its boundaries or from left boundary or right boundary or bottom on the top if we give the absolute position and we give the 30 pixel so it will be moved from this position to the 30 pixel but here you see that it have the relative position so it moves according to its first position its first position is started from this so it will be moved on the left side 30 pixel and here I'm gonna increase it then you can understand it clearly here you see that this line is moved from this position to the 90 pixel on the left side so this is the relative position element move according to the first position according to the last position this is its first position and the last position you can call it anything and now I'm gonna give it top 20 pixel so now here it is here you see that it moves 20 pixel down from its previous position and if we give it we can also give it bottom here is the bottom here I'm gonna give it the bottom 30 pixel and here it is you cannot see the effect of the bottom right now and here is the right and here it is here if we have some text on its uh, right side so that's why then we will see the effect of the right and the bottom but it will be work and the next value is fixed so now here I'm gonna increase these divs and then I will give the fixed value here it is and here it is and now these divs are increased and here I'm gonna increase it more here it is and now these headings are too much but now here you see that here I'm gonna give style here I'm gonna give a different class to the third heading I'm only gonna use this class that is AE and I'm gonna give it the background here is the background is red and now let's check it so now here is the heading I have given it the background red and when I scroll down the page so it will be disappear here you see that it is gonna be disappear but if we want to show this heading continuously or we don't want to disappear this heading when we scroll down the page so what we need to do we have to fix this heading on the page then it will not move at any place here I'm gonna give it position fixed 
if we give it position fix so now refresh this page and now here you see that it is fixed on its default position we are scrolling the page but it is still present and the next thing is it is on this place you can position this heading at any place in the page by giving the top left and right and bottom here I'm gonna give it top here is top 200 pixel and left is also 200 pixel and here it is so now here you see that it is now fixed at this position so this is the positioning if you have any problems currently at the discussion i will help you as much as i can thank you for watching this video i will see you in the next video hi guys in this lecture you will be learning how to handle the overflow how to handle the display and visibility and then the combinators and opacity so first of all here i'm going to create a paragraph here I'm going to create a div and here is its closing tag and in between this I'm going to copy a paragraph here is the paragraph so now here I'm going to define its width and height here is its width 200 pixel and its height is also 200 pixel and now let's render it and here I am gonna provide the border and now execute it so here you see that uh, the content is overflow from the div and how to handle it we need to provide the overflow property if we give it value overflow hidden so the content that is outside the div is automatically height and if we give it scroll then a scroll is added and we can assess the content here the content is present and the next thing is and the next thing is the display and the visibility property so here uh, i'm gonna create a second div copy this and here and give the different here I'm gonna make it paragraph so now here is the paragraph and I'm gonna give it the border one pixel solid black so now let's watch both of these so here is the paragraph and here is the div so now I'm gonna apply the visibility property on the div so I'm gonna give it a value hidden and reload the page so now here you see that the div still covers the space but it is not visible it means the div is existing but it is not visible and we are also able to give it a value visible then it's visible and now I want to show you the display property when we give the display property then the element does not cover the space display none and here you see that the div cannot covering the space the div is no more exist it is not covering the space so that's why paragraph float on the upside and then we can also give it block then the div is shown on the screen here is the div 
so now so that's why we are using the display property because display property uh, will just disappear the HTML element and the next thing is the opacity we can also give the opacity to an image then it's become transparent here I'm gonna import an image here is the JPG so now here is the image it is clearly shown to you but now here I'm gonna give it image and now we have to write opacity and then we can give the value from the 0 0.1 to 1.0 if we give the 0 0.1 it is completely transparent here it is completely transparent but if we give 0 0.5 or 0 0.34 so here it is less transparent if we give 1.0 so it is fully visible so this is the way we can use the opacity and the next thing is the combinators so first of all what is the combinators here I'm gonna remove this and make it a paragraph I have removed that paragraph mistakenly here is the second paragraph so now these are the two paragraphs now I'm going to apply the styles on these paragraph first of all write the div selector then P so now what I am going to do there are two paragraphs I am going to apply the style on this paragraph by using the combinator so what is the combinator the combinator is just uh, a way in which we use the different selectors to apply style this is a descendant selectors in which we apply the style on the paragraph that is inside the div so now this style is only apply on this paragraph that is inside the div reload the page and here you see that the border is apply only the first paragraph here I'm gonna increase its height so here you see that the first paragraph have the style because it is inside the div this is called the combinator and here I'm gonna show you another thing that is here I'm gonna remove this div and here create another paragraph and now here I'm gonna close the div but here I'm gonna make it in the span this paragraph is now inside the span and now I am going to apply the style on the paragraphs that is inside the div and that is that are the direct children of the div here this is a child selector this is a child selector this is the descendant selector so now the style is apply only on the paragraphs that are the direct child of the div here these two paragraphs are the direct child of the div but this paragraph is the child of the span and then span is a child of the div so here I'm gonna give the background red so now let's watch it here you see that first two paragraphs have the red background here I'm gonna remove the height here remove the width and now watch it clearly so here you see that first two paragraphs have the style because it because these are the direct children of the div here you can see that and the third one is the child of the span
so this is the child selector i hope you enjoy this lecture if you have any problems so kindly add the discussion on udemy i will help you as much as i can and in my next lecture i'm going to discuss pseudo elements and pseudo classes see you in the next lecture hi guys in this lecture you will be learning the pseudo elements and the pseudo classes so first of all here i have already created the paragraph so now i am going to use the pseudo elements to style the first line first letter and i am going to insert the data before and after this paragraph using the pseudo elements so first of all write the selector is the paragraph then we have to write two columns that is for the pseudo elements here first of all i'm gonna give the style to the first line of the paragraph so we have to use the pseudo element first line and now here is the parenthesis and here i'm gonna give it the color is red here is the red and save it and let's execute it so here i'm gonna check it color is here first line we have to write first line so now here is the first line is become red so we can also write first letter so the first letter is styled so here you can see that first letter is become red and another pseudo element is the before and after here if we write before so we are able to insert the content before this paragraph here if we write content and here is colon and here if we write fad and here is the colon so this content that is fahad is going to be inserted before this paragraph let's check it here you see that fahad is inserted before the paragraph and if we make it after then this data is going to insert after the paragraph here is the fahad and we can also insert the pictures here if we write url and here if we write one dot jpg and here you see that picture is, is inserted after the paragraph and if we make it before then check it here the picture is before the paragraph so these are the pseudo elements and now i am going to teach you the pseudo classes so basically the pseudo classes mostly pseudo classes are used uh, to facilitate the form uh, to form inputs how to check the input and all these things so here i am going to remove this paragraph and here create a input field without the form tag here is the type is checked input type is checkbox so now here i'm gonna give it the style here what we need to do first of all i'm gonna give it a style when we check the box when we click on it then its size is become increased when we click on it its size is become increased so here we need to write the selector input and colon and then in the pseudo classes we have to write only one colon then write the checked when the in input field is checked then its width is increase by 200 pixel and let's execute it and here its width is increasing but I'm also going to give the height let's do this so here you see that when we click on it its height and width is increased you can do the same thing on the radio box here if it is radio 
then here you see that it is radio button so in this way you can do many other things you can apply this on other fields and the next thing is for the text field here is the text field here if the text field is disabled or enabled so we are able to apply the style on it here is the field is disabled so now I'm gonna change this pseudo class to the disabled and here I'm gonna give it width and the background color is that so now let's check it so now it's this field is disabled it have the increased width and the background color and if this field is enabled if this field is enabled or so it is going to increase it is not necessary here this is enabled and here yellow so here I have changed it and you can type the text in it this field is now enabled and it depends upon you you have you want to write enable here or not I want to tell you a focus property sudo class focus now when we focus on this field so here you see that the yellow color is apply and the width is increase so what is this function here the input field is this only this input field so it applies the focus when we click on it uh, it applies the style when we click on it when we focus on this field and the next thing is the optional what are the optional fields when I have teach you the form at that time I have teach you the required when we write the required in any input field so the form cannot be submitted without that field but here we have not write any required attribute so this is an optional field so when an optional field exists so this style is applied so here you see that and if we write the required so this style will not going to be apply on this field and if we write required here then this style will apply because this is a required field we have write and if we want to apply the style on the read only file read only file then let's watch this here is the read only file here we have to write a hyphen then it's work here it is read only it the style is apply and the next thing is if we remove it then the field is read write we can able to read we are able to read and write the field so now here this style is still apply and the next thing is valid and invalid here I want to apply a email field and here if somebody put the valid email then it apply the yellow color and if someone put the invalid email then it will apply the red color here is the input so now let's write here when we write the invalid email it supply the red color and when we write the complete gmail.com uh, so it insert the yellow color so when we write the input so it select all the input fields that are in the form so 
this will not create any problem so this is the way we can use the pseudo classes and the pseudo elements if you have any problem in my lecture so kindly add the discussion on udemy i will help you as much as i can thank you for watching this video hi guys in this lecture we are going to build this menu and if you have any problem in my previous lecture so you can add the discussion i will help you as much as i can and when you are browsing on the internet you have opened many websites and almost every website have the menu and menu is just for going to on other pages of the website when you click on any uh, button on any option you can go to another page so almost every menu is built in the list every menu have the honor list on order list and now i'm gonna build this menu first of all what we need to do we have to place the honor list then the list items and this home is inside the anchor tag and that anchor tag is inside the list item so now we will build then you can understand it clearly here i have already uh, execute make its file and here is the structure and all the things and now in the body i'm gonna make its menu and here is ul and then here is the list items and then in this list item here is the anchor tag that will contain the home here is the home here in the picture you can see that there is a home at the first so in this way you have to build all of these options and then we will give it the styles and here is the home and now here in the anchor tag we have to give the hyper reference the destination of the home when we click on the home so what page will be open and here I'm gonna increase it and here is here I'm gonna check it services products contact us about us and here is services and here is products and then here is contact us this is the contact us contact us and here is about us and now reload it so here is the rough menu is created we have not given it the style so that's why it looked like this now what we need to do at the first we have to remove this default space this is created by the margin and the padding that is given to the on our list and here i'm gonna remove this margin and the padding that is given to the ul here is we have to write margin zero and here is the padding is also zero now let's check it here it is so now the space is removed so that's why these uh, bullets are not present so now what we need to do we have to remove these bullets these bullets are hide here so that's why to remove the bullets we have to write list style none here is none and now let's and now the next thing is we have to give it the style we have to give the style to the anchor tag different menus are made by using the different techniques and now first of all we will give this background color this green background color then this white color to the text and then this width and the padding and here is here we have to write ul then li and then a here you can see that this is the ul this is the list item and here is the anchor tag that is inside the list item so this style is going to be apply on the anchor tag that is in the list item and list item is in the ul and first of all here is the background color on the anchor tag here is 4ca and f50 i have copied this code from the internet this code color code and here it is so now here you can see that this background color is given to it but you can see that this 
box this every box every option have not the specific width and height and now I'm gonna give the width to the anchor tag here is the width I'm gonna give it 140 pixel and here it is and here it is so now this is not working because width is not applying on this anchor tag because we have to give it the display block then the anchor tag is shown as a block level element then the width is going to be work here is display as a block so now the anchor tag is become a box it is just like a box and when we have not applied this display block then this anchor tag is a line element so that's why width is not applying on the anchor tag and now the next thing is I'm gonna apply the padding here you can see that the, the space is not created inside every box and before the padding here I'm gonna apply the border on it here is one pixel solid here is hash zero zero and now let's check it so now here you see that there is no space inside the boxes and here is the padding 13 pixel here it is so now it is a complete box and the next thing is we have to apply the color on this text here is the color is hash fff and the next thing is we have to remove this underline and here is color is become text decoration none and then the font family Tahoma and here is the font size 14 pixel and here it is now it is adjusted and now here you see that this text is on the left side in the anchor tag we have to align it in the center of the anchor tag here is in the center so now the text is in is become in the center of the anchor tag here you see that in the picture it is also in the center and now all the styles are given to the anchor tag and the next thing is we have to make it in a line here you see that there is a home services and all the things so how to make this menu in a line we have to give the float left to the list item here is the ul here is a list item here is this and here is float here is left so now all the list items are floated to the left it is also float to the left it is floated to the left so now that's why it is represent like this and now we are also able to remove this border and here I'm gonna remove that border so there is a white space between it here is so I'm gonna apply a white color of border here it is and now if you if we want to make this menu in a list so what we need to do we just need to remove this float left and now here I'm gonna apply a style on this menu when we take the mouse over any option so its color is going to be changed and here is ul li anchor tag and here is hover when we take the mouse over any anchor tag here is color is become black here it is so now here it is so the menu is ready in this way you have to build the menu and if you have any problems kindly add the discussion on udemy i will help you as much as i can so thank you for watching this video i will see you in the next video hi guys in this lecture you will be learning how to make an image gallery so first of all here i have already a copy a image from the internet and now i'm going to create an image gallery like this here is the image and the description of the image so now let's create it so first of all here i'm gonna make 
a div in which we place the text and the image here is the external div in which we place the text and the image both so the external div have the id image and here it is closing and now in between this i am going to put the image and on the image i am going to apply the anchor tag when we click on the image so a full image is open and here i am going to give the hyper reference of the image 1.jpg and here is the alt that is flower and uh, you can also give it now i'm going to give it the target underscore blank blank and in between this here i'm going to insert the image img then source equal and here one dot jpg and now let's check it the image is loaded so now we have to place another div here in which we put the text div and its id is detail and here is a another div here i'm gonna write add detail of image and now i am going to give the style to this div here let's check it here is the text here add the detail of image here and here i am going to write the first div image and here i am first of all i am going to give it the margin here you can see that here is a space around the image so i am going I'm going to give it the margin 5 pixel here is the 5 pixel and then I am going to give it the border border is 1 pixel solid and its color is hash cc and then I am going to give it width 180 pixel and float it to the left this div have this div is floated to the left and here it's width and the border and all the things here it is adjusted now the next thing is I am going to give the style to the image here write the hash image then in the image this is a div and then we are going to give the style to the image that is in the anchor tag <coughs> and here we have to write the width 100% and then the height that is auto height is automatically adjusted according to the page and here I am going to give it hover when we take the hover over the div so its border color is change it gives a nice look here is this color is nice and then I am going to give a little style to the detail here is the text align to the center and then padding is 15 pixel and then font size for 15 pixel and font family Arial 
and now let's check it before doing this here I want to give the width and the height to the image here I'm going to give it for 300 width and here we need to apply this and the height is 200 this is a little mistake we have provide the alt here we need to provide it here so now let's load it so here it looked like this so now I'm going to give it some extra style here uh, you see that here is a little error detail here this div ID name is wrong so now let's check it so here the text is in the center and it is just look like this and you can also increase the size of the image by changing this height and width based the second image and the third and the fourth here is paste this code and then edit this so now here this is the 2.jpg 2.jpg and this image have the 3.jpg and this have the 4.jpg so the div remains same div have the same style same text but the images change so now let's look at it so here are the images here we also need to change this image here is and now let's look at it so here you see that these are the different images and when we take the mouse over the image so the border is become changed and when we click on the image so a full size image is open here you see that a full size image is open and if we click here then another full size image is open so this is the way we can make a gallery to store the images and in the next lecture I'm going to teach you how to make a layout just a simple layout so see you in the next video hi guys in this lecture I am going to teach you how to make a layout using the HTML and CSS here I have already downloaded a layout from the internet so first of all we are going to make the header of this page this is the header and then this uh, sidebar this sidebar uh, contain the simple text but now here I am gonna make a menu at the place of this sidebar and then this section area and then this footer area so we are going to make this menu in the HTML5 by using the semantic elements so here first of all I'm going to create the header element and in between this header I'm going to give h1 heading tag and here is the closing h1 and here is the fourth fuck and let's uh, now I am going to make a nav element in between this I am going to make a navigation bar here first of all we need to place the ul and then here is the ul and then here is the list items here is another list item and here we have to place an anchor tag and here is the anchor tag and in between this I am going to write home and here is the hyper reference hyper reference and here is the services and here is the products 
and here is the about us and save it so now the menu is created and let's check it here is the heading and at the end we will give the style to all of these elements and then I am gonna create a section here is the section where we place the paragraphs and now I am going to copy the paragraph from the CNN here is I am going to open a post here and copy this paragraph and write the paragraph tag Here is the p then paste the paragraph and then paste the paragraph here so now there are four paragraphs in the body and let's let's check it so here are the paragraphs here I'm going to close it and now what we need to do we have to make this footer code the footer here is the footer tag in which I'm going to write the copyright here is the copyright by Fahadish Fak or Fahad uh, and here I'm going to create a copyright symbol here is for creating the copyright symbol you have to write and and then copy so the copyright symbol is automatically created here you can see that this is the copyright symbol and now I'm going to give the CSS styles to all of these elements so first of all start with the body here I'm going to remove the padding and the margin of the body the default space is given to the body and then I'm going to give in the style to the header here is the header and first of all I'm going to give it the background color here is the background color and here is the hash 4ca and here is the complete code is 50 and then the color of text is white and the padding is 5 pixel and then the text align to the center and then font family is Tahoma so now I'm gonna apply the font family Arial on all the body on all the text in the body here is Arial so now let's execute it so here you can see that this is the header and now we can give the style to the navigation bar here is the nav and here is its style first of all background color color is hash e e e e and then the height is 460 pixel and then width is 200 pixel and float to the left because the sidebar is on the left side in the picture here you can see that and then I'm going to give it padding 
padding is 5 pixel and now I am going to give the style to the unordered list that is in the navigation bar here I am going to write ul and give it margin 0 and also the padding and then the list style type none list style type none so re it removes the bullets let's check it so here is the sidebar its color is this and here the bullets are removed and now we can give the other styles and now I'm going to give the style to the anchor tag in the unordered list here is the ally and then it color is white the font family is already Arial and the font size is 14 pixel and the text decoration is none display is block text align to the center and here is the border is 1 pixel border bottom we are going to apply the border on the bottom side but now I'm not going to give it the value here is the padding padding from the top side is 10 pixel and then the padding from the bottom side is also the 10 pixel and then I am going to give the style on the hover to the anchor tag here when we take the mouse over the anchor tag then its color is become black color of the text is become black and let's check it so we have not apply the background color so here I'm going to apply the background color hash 4 C A F 5 0 and now let's check it so here are the menu and now I'm going to apply the border bottom is 1 pixel solid and it is white so it apply the border only at the bottom side so here are the borders so the next thing is to style this section area here section and here is the width 90 pixel and here is float to the left and font size is become the 13 pixel so now let's let's check it the width is less I am going to give it a little increased width not 90 pixel it's 500 pixel so now let's check it so here is we need to increase it 800 pixel so it look good and here I'm going to apply a heading h1 and London London and now let's look at it it looked nice and here is the footer so 
I am going to adjust it and here I am going to increase its width of the section is 1000 pixel so it's increased and now here I am going to give it some other thing that is footer I am going to give the style to the footer and first of all I am going to give it the background color so we can locate it where it is exactly here is the color so let's watch it so here is the footer because we have given the float left to the section and the sidebar so that's why uh, it is floated over the section and the sidebar so I have already tell you a property that we use the clear both then this footer is automatically adjusted here clear and both here it is so now here is the footer and I'm going to increase its height here what we need to do write the height and here is the height 100 pixel this is too much I'm going to reduce it 70 pixel and then here I'm going to give it the clear both property already given and text align to the center here is it's in the center so here you can see that it is in the center and if we give it padding so it's better here is it's padding is 20 pixel so now here is the footer it is adjusted so here you can see this and this so this is the way you can create your menu and other things and all the layout so this is just a layout i will teach you the complete website from the next section the five websites how to make each and every page how to make the menu gallery and all the things sliders content area and these are the five different websites so in my next lecture i'm going to teach you the prefixes and the css3 colors what are the new colors scheme in the css3 i will see you in the next lecture hi guys in this lecture I am going to teach you the CSS3 colors and prefixes so first of all what is the prefixes and the CSS3 colors if uh, many CSS3 properties are not work properly uh, in the browsers in many browsers like Opera Chrome and other browsers Safari and the Internet Explorer so the CSS uh, have introduced some prefixes if we write the prefixes before uh, the pro CSS properties so these properties work properly here let's suppose we are applying uh, some styles on this div uh, I have not created any div but it is just for example and here we write uh, example let's say color and here is the color is hash FFF and then if this color is not properly rendered in the browser then we have to write uh, the prefixes before this property here for the chrome and the safari we have to write webkit uh, hyphen webkit and hyphen so this is for the chrome and safari and uh, for the mozilla firefox we have to write moz and for the opera 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 whatever 
it is if we have to write o so it's o and for the internet explorer we have to write ms for the internet explorer so these are the prefixes if any property doesn't work in browser so you uh, can try these prefixes and the next thing is css3 colors uh, the css3 has newly introduced three color schemes rgba hsl and hsla uh, you have already done the rgb but the new scheme has the rgba so here i'm going to create a div and here is the div and here is and here is the width here is here is the height is also 400 pixel and here I'm going to create a border is one pixel solid and black so now let's execute it so here is the div and now I am going to give it the background color by using the RGBA scheme here is the background and first of all RG write RGBA and a stands for alpha and R for red, green, blue and uh, A is just alpha and uh, close this C cleaner and now first of all I am give uh, we are able to give uh, the three colors three values 0 to 255 here I am going to write 255 0 and 0 red green blue and then we are able to give the value of alpha so what is the alpha have you remember the word opacity the opacity we learn uh, in the css the opacity is used to make the colors and the pictures transparent so here we are also able to give the opacity from 0 0.1 to 1.0 here i'm going to give 0 0.5 so now let's execute it so here you see that this color is transparent and if we write 1.0 value to opacity so it's completely red so this is the rgba scheme and now i'm going to define hsl scheme so what is the hsl stands for h for hue and the s for saturation and l for lightness and here we have to write the brackets first of all hue is the angle of the color here i'm gonna write zero and then we have to write the saturation saturation is uh, you want to put the full color half color how many percentage of the color here i'm gonna write 100 percent and then you are able to write the lightness here i'm gonna put the lightness 30 percent and here is the semicolon and let's execute it so here is the color and the third type of the color is hsla so a uh, i hope you understand what is a a is the alpha the opacity so here we are also able to put the opacity here if i put 0 0.2 so let's execute it so here you can see that this is opacity it changed the colors transparent the colors so this is this is the color schemes and prefixes if you have any problem so kindly add the discussion on udemy i will help you as much as i can and in my next lecture i am going to teach you uh, how to make the rounded corners of the divs and see you in the next lecture hi guys in this lecture i am going to teach you how to give the rounded corners to the div how to set the image uh, at the place of the border so here i have already created a div and give it a height and the weight and the border so now here i am going to make its corner rounded here you can see that this is a div its corner or edgy it's not rounder so now i'm going to make this corner rounded first of all here write the border then here is the top and then left and then 
hyphen and then radius so now first of all I am going to make the rounded corner of the top left side here I'm going to make this corner rounded and give its value 10 pixel so now it's become rounded here I'm going to check it radius radius spelling is wrong so here you see that the border is, corner is become rounded so now I'm going to increase its value and now check it here 20 pixel and now check it here this corner is become rounded and you can also give these values to all the four corners here I'm going to make it right top right corner it also become 20 pixel and the bottom left and bottom right corner here I'm going to make it bottom and here it's become rounded and here is arts also the bottom here is the right bottom right corner and now it's also become rounded and you can also give it the background color then you can see this clearly here I'm going to give it the background color here is the background color is red so now let's check it how it look like so it is more attractive and you can also give it the background image here I'm going to give it the background image URL and then here one dot jpg and now let's see it so here is the image and it also have the rounded corners and now here you can see that we have to put a lot of properties to make all the four corners rounded but we have also another thing that is shorthand property you can put all of these values in the single property whose name is border radius and first value is for the top left corner second is for the top right here I'm going to give these values 10 pixel for the top left then 10 pixel for the top right corner and then the 10 pixel for the bottom right corner and then the 10 pixel for the bottom left corner so all these four values for all these four corners and if we give only three values then the first value is for the top left corner and the second uh, value is for the top right and the bottom right corner and the third value is for the bottom left corner here let's see that and if we give only two values so first value is for the top left and bottom right corner and the second value is for the top right and bottom left corner so let's execute it so here and if we give only one value so it also work and this value is given for all over the four corners here you can see that and the next thing is I have copied some values from the internet so you can also give it the elliptical shape by giving these fixed values here is the 50 pixel 15 pixel by 50 pixel so it's become elliptical here you can see that and if we convert these values here I'm going to make it 50 and here is so now let's look at it so here it's elliptical from this side and you can also give it 50% and let's watch it so here it's become a hole it's become like a window so this is the way we can give the rounded corners and make the picture around it so in, now i'm going to teach you how to give an image at the place of the border so now i'm going to remove this and here is a div and here is the div 
and now I am going to give it the transparent border first of all it have the transparent border here its style is become transparent so now the border is not shown on the screen and now we can give it the border image border image and here is the source in the source we are able to specify the URL of the image here is the URL is one dot jpg and now let's look at it so now here this border is so small so now I'm gonna give it uh, some other properties so it is visible uh, now we have to give it the border slice property here is the border slice property border image slice so what is the function of the border image slice the border image slice divide the image in nine sections for for the corner four for the edges and one for the middle section and now I'm gonna give it value 30 so now here you can see that the image is given to at the place of the border here is the image here you can see that this is the sky and here are the mountains here you can see the image so now the next thing is border image width here is the border image width we can specify the border image width here is I'm gonna give it 10 pixel so the image width is increased at the border here the width is increased so you can see the image clearly here is the 20 pixel here is the image and the next thing is uh, the border repeat border image repeat repeat and we can give it different values first is round it so when we give the rounded values uh, round rounded value to the repeat uh, the image is tilled or half to fill the border area here you can see that the image have the opposite reflection at this side so it can be the image can be fit in this border image area and the next property is the stretch so when we give the stretch to it so the stretch property uh, extend the image to fill all the area the when we give the rounded property so it tilled the image to cover the area but stretch will extend the image expand the image to fill the area and we can also give it repeat and execute it so here the image is repeating and the next thing is we can also give all these values in the shorthand property border image here is the border image and here we can write the URL of the image here is the URL 1.jpg here I am going to insert another picture and then we have to write uh, the 30 for the slice and then repeat the image so now let's look at it so here the image is changed so this is the way we can use the shorthand property for the border image if you have any problem so kindly add the discussion on udemy i will help you as much as i can thank you for watching this video hi guys in this lecture i'm gonna teach you how to give the more than one background to a html element here i'm gonna give two different images in the background of this div and then i will teach you uh, special properties of the css3 background that is the background origin and background clip so let's start first of all here i have already created a div and here is its width and height and the border and now i'm gonna give the background image here here is the background image 
and first of all we have to write the URL of the first image here is the URL and here in between this I'm going to write the name and the extension of the image and then here is the comma and then here is the second URL and its name and the extension of the image here is 3.jpg and now let's check it here th there is only one image because we have not provided the other properties position and the no repeat so now I'm gonna apply here the background position background position and first of all I'm gonna provide the position to the first image both images are present here for 3 dot jpg 4 dot jpg and first of all we have to give the position of the first image here I'm gonna give the right bottom to the first image and then the position comma and then the position of the second image is left top and you can also give the position in the pixels from the right side uh, from the x, x axis 100 pixel from the y axis 100 pixel you can give the position in the pixels and now here I'm gonna apply the background repeat and here is I'm gonna no repeat for both of these images no repeat and now let's check it it's going to be shown so why it is not applied the second image is not shown because we have not give the background size so now I'm going to give the background size to both of these images here is the back background size here I'm going to edit it to make it size and first of all I'm going to give the size of the first image 100 pixel for the width and 200 pixel height and here is 300 pixel this is the size of the second image 300 pixel is the width of the second image and 100 pixel is the height of the second image and now here it is here is the first image and here is the second image now this process is too long we have also the shorthand property we can put the more than one images in the background uh, by using the shorthand property but here I want to tell you something you are free to put the background images you have not any limit to put the background images and now I'm gonna put this image by using the shorthand property here I'm gonna make it in the comment here is the comment so now it's not going to be shown on the screen here it is and now let's use the background shorthand property first of all give the URL of the first image here I'm gonna give it 4.jpg and then we have to give the background position here of the first image here I'm gonna copy this and then paste it here and then I'm gonna give the size of the first image here is the size of the first image copy it here is copy it and then here we have to write forward slash and then the size of the image and then we have to give the repeat property here I'm gonna write no repeat and then the first image is ready here I'm gonna show you this is the first image and now what we need to do we have to write comma and then all the properties of the second image here I'm gonna copy the URL of the second image here is the URL of the second image and here is the position of the second image by adding a space and then we have to write the repetition uh, the size of the second image here it is by writing the forward slash and then we have to give the no repeat property or the repetition if we want to repeat and here it is and now it is okay here you see that both are inserted by using the background prop 
property and now guys I'm gonna tell you about the new CSS3 background properties that are the background region and background clip property by using these properties you can set the background position from where it is started from the border and it is started from the padding area it is hard to explain I will tell you what is it here I'm gonna remove all of these things here it is remove it and remove this and here is the shorthand property and now here I'm gonna apply no repeat and here is the three dot jpg and now here I'm gonna apply a border here is dashed and now let's reload it and here you see that the image is apply so now let's check it here it is and now here I'm gonna apply the background origin property first of all background origin property here it is the origin and now here I want to tell you something that now the background origin property have the default value that is the padding box here what is the padding box effect here you see that the background is started after the border here is the background it is started after the border so now after the border the padding is started so that's why it now it have the default value padding box and the background is started from where the padding is start here I'm gonna add the padding and then you can see it clearly here is the padding of 30 pixel and now here I'm gonna apply the color on the text is white and a space inside is created and here you see that this is the padding and the background is started where the padding is started but this is the padding box property here it is you can see that but if we apply the border box so now the background is going to be start where the border is started here you see that this is the border line and now the background is started from there and if we apply the content box so now the background is start where the text is gonna be start here you see that this is the background origin and it will be apply on the background image but if we give a background color so we have to use the background clip property here is the background color is red and here it is and now it have the default value border box because the background is started from the border and here we have to write clip property background clip so now it's gonna be start from the content box and if we give it padding box then it will be start after the border where the padding is start here it is and if we give it border box then it is the default value you already know what its effect here it is here it is and this is all the CSS3 background properties. If you have any problems so kindly at the discussion, I will help you as much as I can. Thank you for watching this video. I will see you in the next video. Hi guys. In this lecture, you are going to learn the box sizing. So first of all, what is the box sizing? The box sizing is just related to the width and height. So it is hard to explain. So that's why here I'm going to show you it and here i have already created a div and its border width and height here is the div and now here i'm gonna create i'm gonna give the box sizing property here is the box first of all you have to write box and then here is minus sizing here is and now the default value of the box sizing is content box here is the content box and now here is the box sizing property so now I'm gonna tell you about its functionality when we give the content box so the width of this div 
or in other words the width of the HTML element also include the width of the content you cannot understand this point here I'm going to show you here I'm going to copy this paragraph and then paste it here so now here is the logic when we include the content inside the div so the div width and height must change it should change and we are going to check it and here you see that its width and height is not changed why the width and height of this div is not changed because here I'm going to tell you about this thing it's the logic when you put something in another thing so its shape is changed but here it's not changed why here when we give the content box property context content box value to the box sizing so what happened here the width and height of the div also include the width and height of the content or in other words you can say that there is no width and height of this content so that's why the width and height of the div is not changed or so why its width and height is not existing because its width and height is already included in the width and height of the div or you can say that this 300 pixel is the width of the div and it is also the width of the content so that's why when we put the content inside the div so its width is not changing because this 300 pixel already have the width of the content and now I hope you understand content box functionality when we apply this content box value so the width have the value of the content but it doesn't have the padding and the border in the width so now when we give the padding to this div so its width and height is going to be changed because it is not included inside this width inside this 300 pixel so now its width is 320 pixel the div width is now 320 pixel that is not changed by you putting this content and if we change the width of the border so the width of the div is already going to be changed here you see that so now here I'm gonna wrap it up all when we give the content box so the width and height of the HTML element also include the width and height of the content so that's why when we put the content so the width of the HTML element is not going to be changed and the second thing is the when we give the content box so the width and height of the HTML element does not include the padding and the border so that's why when we give the padding and the border to any HTML element so the width and height of that element is changed and here I want to show you the second value is here is I'm going to change it border box when we give the border box so it also include the width and height of the content so that's why the width and height of the content is not included and here I want to tell you something about the padding here I'm gonna remove this text and now here I'm gonna give the padding here I am gonna give it padding 100 pixel so now it width must need to change and here you see that its width is not changed here you see that its width, width is same here I'm gonna remove it then you can see its effect clearly here you see that when we give the padding so its width is not changing why because when we give the border box property so the HTML element width is include the content width it does it also includes the padding in this width and the border in this width you can say that this 300 pixel include the padding border and the content width of the element in it and here you see that the width of this div is not changing we have give the padding and the border so this is the border box so thank you for watching this video if you have any problems so kindly add the discussion i will help you as much as i can
hi guys in this lecture you will be learning the css3 gradient property so what is the css3 gradient property uh, in the gradient property you can able uh, to give the colors uh, for more than one in the gradient property you are able to give the colors uh, to any html element and you can smoothly change these colors like this so it is hard to explain what is the gradient so here you can see that here it is a blue color here it is just like a green and here it is parrot so this is called the gradient and now i am going to create it so here i have already created a div height width and border and here i am going to change it to the solid and give it a border of a 2 pixel and now here we have to give the gradient property in the background property here we have to write the background and then here we are able to write linear gradient here is the linear gradient and then parentheses and in between this we have first of all we need to write the direction of the gradient so here you can see that in this picture the direction of the gradient is diagonal uh, from this left top to the bottom right or might be it is from the uh, right bottom to the left top so this is called the direction here i'm gonna give to bottom so now the gradient is going towards bottom then we have to write comma and then you have to write the color names here I'm gonna give two colors but you are able to give you are able to give colors as many as you want by separating the comma and now let's check it so here you can see that the the gradient is uh, starting from the top and going towards the bottom so last color is blue and the first color is red and you can also write towards top so it's opposite and you can also write to left to right here it is to left and here it is to right so this is all the thing and the next thing that i want to teach you here the diagonal gradient is created so now i'm going to create a diagonal gradient that start from a corner and going towards another corner so let's start here what we need to do we have to give a corner position here i am going to give it to left top so now the gradient is start from the right bottom and going towards the left top and now here uh, I'm going to give the color the color is already given here increase the color here I'm going to give it yellow and let's increase it so here you can see that uh, the first color is red and it is going towards the left top so the first color is red second is blue and the third is yellow but here you can see that uh, the blue color is more and the yellow color and the red color is less and you can also give the percentages of the color here i am going to give the 65 percent of the red and 10 percent of the blue so now here is 20 percent or the 40 percent let's say so now what we need to do after the color we have to write the percentage and now let's check it so here you can see that uh, the red color is 65 percent yellow color is 30 percent and blue color is 10 percent so i'm going to increase it it's 20 percent and here i'm going to make it 50 percent and now it is increase gradually because we have also give the other colors so that why it is non not showing on the screen so now this is the way we can give the percentages to the color and here you can also write uh, the direction towards bottom top and other and another thing that i want to tell you is the angle you can also give the color uh, the 
angle of the color here if we write the zero degree here I'm going to write zero deg it's called zero degree and let's execute it so the color start from the here bottom and the so the color start from the bottom that is the red color here I'm going to uh, re remove the third color and remove the percentages then you can see the effect of the angle clearly so here let's execute it so here you can see that the first color is red second color is blue if you give the zero degree but if you give the 90 degree so the direction of the color is completely changed here you can see that now red color is on the left and blue color is on the right and if you give 180 degree so now red color is on the top here you can see that and in this way you can also give the degrees in the minus here is and you can also give the 360 degree and now I want to tell you about another thing you can also give the transparency to the color in the ingredient by using the RGBA colors so now here I'm going to remove it and here I'm going to write towards right and then here is the comma and then RGBA colors and here is the 255 0 and here is 0 0.3 and the second color is also red but transparency is increased is one point zero and now you can understand it clearly so here in this way you can give the transparency and you can also repeat the gradient so how to repeat the gradient let's see here you have to give the repeating before the linear gradient repeating here is we have to write repeating and then here are the colors so now let's execute it here we need to remove the direction here you can see that the color is repeating but here we cannot see it clearly uh, and now here I'm gonna give the other colors then you can see it clearly yellow here is the yellow and it is already red and here I'm gonna give it blue so now you can understand it clearly here you can see that the colors are repeating and now I'm gonna give it the percentage 10% and remove this and here it have the 30 percent so now let's see it how it look like so in this way you can see the gradient is repeating by giving the percentages so this is the way you can give the gradient i hope you understand my lecture and in my next lecture i am going to teach you the shadows I will teach you how to give the different shadows to the text and some extra properties that is related to the div and the overflow and the other things and then I will teach you how to include the font without installing it into your computer. It is basically how to include the web font. Thank you for watching this video. See you in the next video hi guys in this lecture you will be learning how to apply the shadows and some extra properties and web fonts so first of all I will show you here I have already created a div and now I am going to apply a shadow on this div so first of all here you can see that there is no shadow on the border and now we have to write box shadow because this is a div 
it is a box we have to write box shadow we first of all we have to give the position of the shadow at the x-axis so now here I'm going to give 5 pixel on the x-axis and the 10 pixel on the y-axis or it is also 5 pixel and then we have to give the blur radius of the shadow or the intensity of the shadow here I'm gonna write 5 pixel is the intensity of the shadow and then its color is red and now let's render it so here you can see that it is at the x-axis and the y-axis and here is the shadow and now we can also give the two shadows to it write the comma and then you have to write the x-axis distance for the second shadow and the y-axis distance and then the intensity and then the color here is the blue and let's render it and in this way the second shadow is here and now we are also able to give the shadow to the text here I am going to write a heading here is the heading is uh, h1 here write heading here is its closing tag and now here I am going to give it the shadow h1 and here first of all write the shadow when we are giving the shadow to the text so we don't need to write the box shadow we have to just write the shadow and first of all write the distance for the x-axis then the distance for the y-axis and then the intensity of the shadow and then the color of the shadow here let's check it here is the heading and now I am going to change it here we have to write the text shadow the complete syntax is text shadow for the when we are giving the shadow to the text so here the shadow is given to it now I'm going to reduce it to the 5 pixel and make it 5 and it is also 5 and then you will see it clearly here you can see that shadow behind the text and now I'm going to give it the second shadow here is I'm going to give 0 pixel for the x-axis 0 pixel for the y-axis and then the 5 pixel for intensity and here is the black shadow and here is 3 pixel and it also becomes a 3 pixel it is also 0 and 0 and let's check it so here you can see that but here I'm going to give the color to the text is white so now let's check it so here you can see that it is looking awesome so in this way you can give the shadow to the text and the div and now I want to tell you some other properties that is text overflow uh, so now here I'm going to remove this heading and also remove this heading remove this here is the parenthesis and here I'm going to paste a paragraph here copy this paragraph and now paste it here in between these divs so now what we need to do here let's check this div so here is the text but now I'm going to reduce its width and height to the 100 pixel and now let's check it so here you can see that uh, the text is overflow so now to avoid the overflow we have to given y overflow hidden here is the overflow hidden so now let's check it so now overflow is hidden and here I'm gonna give white space wrap no wrap here is the no wrap so now all the text in the single line 
here all the text is present here and then I'm gonna give it the text overflow property text overflow so now the text overflow have here I'm going to remove this and then show you what is the function of the white space no wrap so here the text is shown in the single line all the uh, new lines are removed so this is the text no wrap and now here we want to hide this text and here I'm gonna apply text overflow and here I'm gonna apply two properties but before this here when we take the mouse over the div here is the hover then it shows the overflow visible so now the text is visible to the screen when we take the mouse over the text but here you can see that we cannot judge this that some kind of text is present here but if we give the text overflow ellipses ellipses I hope it's correct spelling so now here the dots are created so now you can understand there is a text and you can see it and you can also apply another property that is clip so the text is become normal here you can see that it is normal and the next thing is the long words you can also break the long words that is in the text here I'm going to remove the no wrap and all these properties here let's check it and now I'm going to remove all the extra text here is the text and now I'm going to increase its width so here is the text and now here I'm going to uh, make a word long so now let's execute it and here you can see that this word is so long that it overflow the diff and we can also provide a property for these words word wrap here we can give break word then the word is break that is too long here the word is break and now I'm going to teach you how to add a font without installing uh, into your HTML file here the text is already given and now I'm going to remove it and here is the font file uh, this font name is assassins assassins the killers so now I am going to uh, apply this font but I have not installed this form and I'm gonna directly include this form in my HTML file so before this I want to tell you another thing that many years ago when the computers and the internet uh, is not spread everywhere uh, so at that time when we open any website in the browser so the font that is used by the website if uh, does not present in the user computer then uh, the default form that is present in the user computer is execute but now the time is change uh, the programmers include the font file in the website so whenever we load any website and their font is not present in our computer then that font is downloaded in our computer and then that font is execute so now here I'm going to teach you how to include a font here first of all we need to write add font face and after this we have to write 
font family name we have to give a temporary family name to this font so now here I am going to give it a family name like first and then uh, we have to include that font here write the source and here is the URL and parentheses and here is a semicolon and in between these words we have to write the file name and its extension so this file name is assassins uh, and its type is true type font let's see it it is dot ttf and now I'm going to copy its name here copy this name and now paste it here and dot ttf and the font and the html file is present in same folder so that's why we have to write only its name and extension and now I am going to apply this font family that is first so first is basically this font assassins and now I'm going to apply this family on this paragraph in the div here write the div and here we have to write the font family so now this font will be apply on this font family first so now this font will be apply on this text here I'm going to remove this height and width and let's execute it so here remove this border all this thing so now first of all I'm going to remove it and then check how it look like so here is the default font here this is a default font and now I'm going to apply the first family so now the font is become assassins so it's not change here is a little error that is the equal and now let's check it so here you can see that the font is applicable on it and then you can apply the font size and the font weight and the other attributes so I hope you understand my lecture if you have any problems so kindly add the discussion in the course I will help you as much as I can and now I am going to teach you the transition in the next lecture what is the trans transition and the transition is an important property so see you in the next lecture hi guys in this lecture I am going to teach you how to add the font directly into your file or in other words uh, in the previous lecture I have teach you how to add the font uh, by downloading the file and then place the file in the folders and then you can add that file but now I'm going to teach you how to directly add the link of the font on the internet into your web page so now here I'm going to select a font from the browser here you have to write Google fonts then you can use the Google fonts API my internet is little slow so now here Google fonts and now so now here are the many fonts like this is open sense and the roboto and all these lato and the slabo and the roboto so what you need to do if you want to uh, pick any font then click on the quick use or you can pop out it or see all styles if you want to see all styles click on see all styles so here you can see its styles here is bold 600 600 italic here I'm gonna zoom in and now here you can see the different styles of this font and if you click this then it will automatically into its previous shape and if you want to use this style what you need to do you can click this quick use option or you can search the font here I'm gonna search cabin sketch it is awesome font click on and here is the cabin sketch font and to use this font you have to click 
on quick use but here you can also select the categories sense, sensor, if display, handwriting and all the things and here you can set the thickness of the font here you can vary it then it will search then slant and the width and the script what is the script and all these things but here I'm gonna click on quick use and then here is the screen so now first of all here are the things here are the text if you apply want to apply the bold 700 style so the text will look like this but if you want to apply the normal 400 then it will look like this so these are the things so here I'm gonna click on this style so it will give the link at this site here you can copy this link what is this link let's look at it and here paste it here because it is the link text here is the link tag you already know this tag and then here is the hyper reference and it contain a link to the font fonts dot google api and family font cabin and then relate to the style sheet and type is equal to text css in this way now you can apply this font onto this text by writing the font family cabin sketch here i'm gonna give it some styles background is red and the color is white hash fff so now let's look at it so here is the text and now i'm going to apply some padding on it 20 pixel I think it's okay and here I'm going to zoom this screen so now here you can see that it is uh, it is not a good font it is not awesome so now I'm going to apply another font here font family font family and then include the cabin sketch font here is the cabin sketch and let's look at it Here you can see that the font is changed. So this is the cabin sketch form. In this way you can also add the fonts. And the next thing is that I want to tell you, you can also add the font by using the add import. This is the add import link and you can also add it. Copy this link and where to paste it. This link is paste inside the style.css. Here is the style.css. It contains the add and import. Import is used to import or connect this link. And then here is the URL in the parentheses. So in this way, here you can also apply this font on the div. Here I'm going to remove this from here and then apply in this here mm, font family the add import this link is used when we are using the external style sheet here we can give cabin sketch and let's look at it So it will it applying on this text and you can also uh, search another fonts here I'm gonna remove this so it will show the default fonts you can also use this label here Let's click on this label so now it is showing their style it has only one style normal 400 it will look like this so in this way you can use link of the font into your style sheet into your html page so i hope you understand my lecture if you have any problem so kindly add the discussion on udemy i will help you as much as i can thank you for watching this video
hi guys in this lecture you will be learning the transition so first of all what is the transition it is a css3 property it is just a effect uh, in transition we can see uh, the effect of changing css values the css properties values smoothly change in the transition so here I am gonna apply the transition on this div here is a div it have the background color border and now I am going to apply a hover on this div when we take the mouse on this div its width is changed and then we can see the effect of changing the width and here first of all I am gonna apply directly without transition here when we change the width it's 400 and we are gonna make it 500 so now when we take the mouse over it so it just happened quickly we cannot see the effect it is not attractive awesome but we are gonna make it awesome by using the transition and now here in the div we have to apply the transition on the div first of all write the transition property in this we have to write on which property we want to apply the transition here I, I want to apply the transition on the width when the width is changed we want to see the width and the second thing is uh, the time for the transition how much time you want to see the transition here I'm gonna write one second and then here we have to write transition duration and then we have to write transition timing function here is the timing function in this property we have to give the speed of the transition at the start at the end here I'm gonna write linear so now the speed of the transition is uh, just same and now let's load it and here you can see that uh, the width is increasing smoothly and we can also apply the same transition on the background but we have to write the background here and if we want to apply the transition on other elements or on all the elements then we have to write all so now the transition is applied on all the elements that is uh, on all the CSS properties that is apply on the div width height background but now here I'm going to change its background color yellow so now we can see it smoothly here you can see that its color is changing smoothly the values are changing smoothly this is the transition and its speed is linear and here I want to tell you another thing you can also here give the value is in so at the start the transition is slow here you can see that at the start the transition is slow and then it speeds increase and if we give is out so the transition speed uh, is slow when it is at the peak at the end here you can see that at the peak its speed is slow and if we give is in and is out then the transition speed is slow at the end and at the start but at the center of the transition its speed is fast and now here I'm gonna give it linear and we can also give it another property transition delay here is the transition uh, delay and we have to give uh, the delay of the transition at the start that uh, here we if we give the one second for a delay then the transition is start after the one second here I'm going to give one second delay so now when we take the mouse over the transition the transition is start after the one second delay here you can see that it is start of the one second delay so you can all also use the shorthand property you can put all these properties in the single line here write the transition then write the all 
to apply transition on all properties and here write the duration here I'm gonna write 0 0.3 seconds then timing function is linear and delay is 2 second but now here I'm not gonna write any delay so now here the transition is fast because the duration is small it is 0 0.3 seconds and now I'm gonna give uh, so now in my next lecture I'm gonna teach you 2d transforms what is the 2d transform so let's see in the next lecture thank you for watching this lecture I'll see you in the next lecture hi guys in this lecture you will be learning the CSS3 2d transform so what is the 2d transform uh, in the simple words what is uh, the transform is the property through which you can change the shape size and position of an element so that is called the transform and 2d is called the two dimensional you can change the position size and shape of any element in two dimensions so here to see the effect of the transform we have to apply the transition so you can see the effect of transform clearly without the transition you cannot see the effect of transition transform so now here I'm gonna apply the hover over the diff and in between this we have to define the properties for the of the transform first of all write the transform and then we have to write the functions but before this here I'm gonna write uh, provide the transition on the transform here is all properties and all properties and here is the one second delay and here is the linear timing function and now here first function in the transform is translate so what is the function of the translate the translate function uh, move an element from the current position to the given position according to the given parameter so here we have to provide uh, a parameter first of all we will move this div on the x-axis so that's why here I have write the x so here I'm gonna give 20 pixel in the x-axis so now this div will move 20 pixel in the x-axis here we have to write hover and now let's check it so now here you can see that div is moved 20 pixel in the x-axis so if we write y-axis so now it is moving 20 pixel in the y-axis and you can also give both values in the same function what you need to do just write translate and 20 pixel for the x and 20 pixel for the y-axis and here is it's moving and here I'm gonna write 0 0.3 second so now it is fast the transition is now is become fast and the next function is rotate you can also give the rotate so what is the function of the rotate in the rotate you can move any element in the clockwise or anti-clockwise direction what you need to do you just need to give the angle here I'm gonna give 20 degree so now it is moving 20 degree here it's moved 20 degree and you can also give different angles minus 180 so now it's moved minus 180 here you can see that so in this way you can apply many functions now I am going to give another function that is the scale so what is the scale the scale is a function in which uh, we can increase width or height of the div along the x-axis and the y-axis here if we write x so now here if we give 2 so now its uh, width is become 2 times increase in the x-axis or so now its width is increase 2 times and if we write y so now its height is increased here you can see that its height is increased two times and you can also apply both things in the same function by only writing the scale 
and here first is width and the second is the height and the other function is skew what is the skew when we give the skew so we can move an element along the x-axis or y-axis according to the given angle so here write skew and here if we write x then here is the 20 degrees so now element is move in the x-axis 20 degree if we write y so now it's moving 20 degree in the y direction and we can also give both angles here I'm gonna give 40 degree for the x-axis 20 degree for the y-axis so now it is moving this is called the skew so now I am going to teach you the 3d transform so first of all what is the 3d transform I have already teach you the 2d transform but in the 3d transform you can change the directions in the three dimensionally you can also say that you can uh, you can also say that you can change the position size and shape in the z-axis so first of all let's start here I'm gonna remove this function and I'm gonna provide the rotate function and in the rotate function you can also give the x-axis and you can give the degree so now this fun div is gonna be rotate in the x-axis but it is less and you can also give the y here we have to write the uppercase x and y and z because the w3c recommended the lowercase also works but recommendation is important and here I'm gonna provide more angle 180 degree so here you can see that it is rotating in the y axis and you can also give the z so now let's see what happened so here it is moving in the z axis that is also called the 3d axis and you can also write all these three axes in the 3d function rotate 3d function and here what we need to do first of all we need to write the value for the x-axis and then the value for the y-axis and then the value for the z-axis and then an angle of a movement so now let's check it so here you can see that it is rotating 2, 3 and 5 it is just the position in the x axis, y and z axis and now I am going to show you uh, the translate z property we have learned the translate x axis and translate y but we have not learned the translate in the z axis here is the translate z we have to provide 50 pixel so now uh, the div is moved 50 pixel in the z axis here let's render it but here you cannot see the effect clearly we have to provide the perspective property what is the perspective property perspective property is used to view the 3d elements and the 3d effects here right perspective and here in between this I'm gonna write 500 pixel and now let's check it so here you can see that this is a translate the effect and now I want to show you you can also put all the X and Y and Z in the single property here write the translate 3d 3d and here for the x axis 50 pixel for the y axis 10 pixel and for the z axis 20 pixel and now let's check it it is moving and now i want to show you the scale property for the z axis and the 3d axis but for here i'm going to write scale z 3 it is the value for the z axis then the div is placed but here we have to 
to provide the perspective property here is a perspective perspective 500 pixel and now let's check it it is not clear because we have to provide another property that is rotate then it's show the effect clearly here is the y 45 degree so now let's check it its effect here we have not write the correct spelling so now this is called the scale because it is changing uh, the size of the div in the z axis we have provide the scale property for the z axis it increased the size in the z axis three times and now i'm going to provide 3d and here is the first value for the x axis second is for the y and third is for the z so now here it is and in this way you can see that x axis y axis and the z axis size is increasing and the next property is the rotate y so so the next property is back face visible so here i want to show you why we are gonna apply the back face visible here is the rotate y so whenever we apply the rotate y so here the div is moving but its back face is visible when it is moving but if we want to hide its back face we have to provide the back face back face visibility here we have to write hidden so now let's check it and here you can see that its back face is hidden when it is moving so you can also apply the visible so it will be visible so in this way you can use the 2d and 3d transform and in my next lecture i am going to teach you the animations what is the animation let's see in the next lecture hi guys in this lecture i'm going to teach you the animation so first of all what is the animation uh, in the animation you can specify different styles background colors or all these things whatever you want to define so then the animation allows to change these styles gradually or in other words you can see the effect of changing the styles the colors or in other words you can apply the different colors on a div and then one by one you can change these colors by using the anima animation and here I have created this div and here is its render form so now here I'm gonna first of all I'm gonna create the animation and then I'm gonna specify the style in that animation and then I will use that animation here in this div first of all we have to create the animation first of all write the key frames here we have to write keyframes and then we have to write the name of the uh, animation here I'm gonna write test you can write any name and then in these parentheses you have to write all the styles of the CSS that you want to include in that animation here first of all you have to specify the point from where you want to apply the style when the animation is start you are able to apply a different style and when the animation is end you are able to apply the different style or in other words uh, when the animation is at the zero stage so this style will be applied and if the animation is at the final stage so this animation is applied and if the animation is 50 percent so what style is applied so now here first of all this is the starting point we have to write from so from is the point where the animation is start and here i'm going to write the background color at the start the background color is changed to yellow and then we have to write the final point here i'm going to write two two is the final here i'm going to write background color here is the purple 
so now when the animation is start so it is start from this line from so this background color is apply on that element and then when the animation is end so this background color will be apply so now animation is ready and now I'm gonna apply this animation here on the div so first of all how to apply that animation it is just like a transition and we have to specify the name of the animation duration and the delay so now here I'm gonna specify animation name here is the animation name here I'm gonna write test is the animation name and then here we have to define the animation duration for what minutes or the seconds the animation is going to be run so here we have to define animation duration here I'm gonna write two seconds and then we have to write the animation delay before the animation is start we have to specify the minutes or the second uh, to stop the animation before it's starting or it is just a, like a delay or wait for wait before the running and here I'm gonna specify delay here I'm gonna add the delay of one second and now the animation is ready and now let's check it out and here I'm gonna reload it so now it is the delay of the one second and here you see that here I'm gonna reload it delay one second and yellow color is the starting point and the purple color is the final point and then again the red red color is applied so now here I want to tell you something we are able to apply only two styles here only first is in the from and the second is in the two so that's wrong we are able to apply the different styles at the different point when the animation is on the 0% and then the animation is on the 20% 15% 30% so here I'm gonna specify when the animation is 0% it is not started so this style will be applied when the animation is 25% so this style the color background color is this and you can also apply any style border padding width height position all the CSS styles and you can apply this animation on all the HTML elements and here I'm gonna increase it so when the animation is 50% its color is become green here is and when the animation is 75 percent so its color is become blue and here is the final color I'm gonna apply parrot black here is 100 percent when the animation is 100 percent so this black color will be applied and now let's render it one second delay and here you see that all the colors are applied so this is the animation and it is too fast you can increase its duration so it is now slowly slowly execute here you see that another animation function so here is animation play state you can stop or play the animation here is play and here we have to write state and here is this and if we apply paused so now animation is stopped it's not running here you see that it is still stop one second delay is over and if we apply running so now it start to running and the next function is the animation timing function by applying the animation timing function you can apply the you can give the values linear ease in ease out ease in out so these values are also present in the transition and you have already know what's the function of the linear it just uh, run the animation smoothly it have not any style 
when we give the value is in so at the start the animation is slowly execute and the rest of all the animation is fastly execute and here we have to write timing and here is the function and first of all here I'm gonna apply linear and it is just a simple timing function it is just linear smoothly smoothly execute here I'm gonna reduce this two seconds so now if we write is in so now at the start the animation is execute smoothly slowly here it is and if we write is out you can understand it and here I'm gonna create uh, some other styles in the animations uh, so here I'm gonna change the position here I'm gonna give it position relative to the div so now let's change the color and the position of the div and here I am going to give the left and the top position here at the start the left is 0 pixel and here is the top is also 0 pixel and now I am going to copy these things from here and here it is so now the left is 200 pixel and here I am going to give top is also 200 pixel here is and now here I'm gonna give the left is 0 pixel and here is 200 pixel and now here I'm gonna make it 0 0 pixel at the end and now let's run it here it is you can see that this animation is applied and here you see that this is just a simple but you can also change its direction by giving another function that is animation direction here I'm gonna choose the animation direction make it direction and you can give the reverse here is the reverse and you can also give the alternative here you can see that it is in the reverse direction and if we give the alternative and here is the alternative here why it is not applying because here we have to give alternate and let's check it so here this is the alternate and it's just like a reverse but here is another value is alternate reverse here is the alternate reverse and now here it is this is the alternate reverse so why it is not applying because we have to give the animation iteration count we have to repeat the animation so then this alternate reverse will be applied here we have to write animation iteration count here I'm gonna remove it and write animation iteration count here is the count and here I'm gonna write 3 so now it will be applied so now animation is going to be repeat for the three times here you see that this is the alternate reverse and thank you for watching this video if you have any problems or kindly add the discussion in the course I will help you as much as I can see you in the next lecture hi guys in this lecture you will be learning the how to add the columns in the div so now here I have already created a div and here is the text and uh, here is its rendered form and now I'm gonna increase this text and make the columns or in other words block of this text so now here let's increase this text copy this and paste it here paste it again so now let's check it how it look like 
so here is the text so now I am gonna make the columns of this text I'm gonna divide this text into the columns like in the newspaper you have you are reading the newspaper and all the text is divided into the columns in the newspapers so I'm gonna apply the same style on this paragraph so here write the div selector here is the parentheses and here I'm gonna apply first of all we need the webkit prefix because this property is not going to work without the webkit so first of all we need to write the column count what is the function of the column count column count create the blocks of the paragraph in other words with the column count you can create two three four or five or as many as you want to create the block of the paragraph here I'm gonna create three blocks of the paragraph so now it divide the text into three blocks and you can also write four then it divide into the four and here you can also adjust this gap between these paragraphs so what here I'm gonna copy this and here you need to write column gap and here I'm gonna give the gap of 20 pixel so now let's check it now it's increase and you can also apply a border in between these columns so now I'm gonna apply the border here copy this here we can call the rule here the rule is the border so here is the style column rule style and here is the style is solid I'm gonna apply the solid and then copy this here I'm gonna give the width of the border is 10 pixel and here is the width and then I'm gonna apply the color here is the color is black here is the color so now let's check it how it look like so here the border is apply onto these columns so there are three columns you can create as many as you want and now uh, th this is a long way to create a column rule a column border here I have a shorthand property in a single line you can write all this code so how to write it first of all write the webkit here's the webkit and then you have to write the column and then rule and like border property you have to give first border width then style and then its color here it is and now let's check it so it is still on so it's working and now you can also give it the another thing that is the column width you can adjust the width of the column so here I'm gonna apply the column width here remove this and here is the column width here I'm gonna apply the 500 pixel so now the number of columns are going to reduce it's not working because we have provided the column rule here I'm gonna make it in the comment here is the comment and now let's check it so here I'm gonna increase this to 800 and then refresh it so here it's completely changed give it 600 so here you can see that the column width is the 600 pixel so this is the way we can give the column width and now you can also give these properties in a shorthand property that is the columns here is the columns and first of all we are able to give the width here I'm going to give it 300 pixel and then the count here I'm gonna give the count two. so the two columns are created here it is created and now I'm gonna make it in the comment here 
then it will be work here. now let's check it so here here we have to provide webkit then it work properly so now let's check it so here are the 300 pixel column and with the two counts and the other thing that i want to tell you is we can also provide a heading then we are able to span that heading over columns so first of all here i'm gonna create a h1 heading here is the h1 heading here is here i'm gonna write heading and now i am gonna spread this heading over the columns here is the heading but now i'm gonna make this heading to the part of these columns here it it is looking like it is not a part of this column so now here what we need to do we just need to write the h1 selector and here is we need to write webkit and then write the column and here is span and we can span the heading over the two columns and the one column here i'm gonna write one column so now it will be span only on the one column here let's look at it why it's not working so why it is not working here is the problem here we need to provide this heading inside the div here write this heading and now let's check it out so here you can see that this heading is span is spread over only one column but if we want to span it to spread it over all the columns then we have to provide all so now it will be spread over all the columns so in this way you can apply the columns and the column width and the borders and span the columns and now i'm going to teach you how to handle the user interface how to move the div how to resize the div in the vertical and the horizontal direction and in the both directions at the same times so let's start here i'm going to remove this heading and now here remove this and here i'm going to make it in the comment here is the comment and now here i'm going to provide the border to this div here is the one pixel solid black and now let's check it so here it is look like this and apply the width here i'm gonna give it 300 pixel it's not enough 800 pixel so now here is the div but here you can see that it is not adjustable we cannot move the div horizontally or vertically but if you write the overflow auto so then the overflow is automatically adjusted when we resize the div and here we have to provide the property resize and here if we write vertical then we can move the div vertically resize the div vertically here the attribute here the symbol is created and you can move the div in the vertically but here if we write horizontal then you can move the div horizontally only here it is horizontally moving and the content is automatically adjusted because we have provided the overflow auto property and if we provide both then the div is adjusted automatically in the vertically and in the horizontal direction here is here you can able to provide in the horizontal and the vertical direction here its height is reduced and here it is increased so in this way you can resize the elements 
you can apply this property on many other HTML elements. If you have any problems, kindly add the discussion in the course. I will help you as much as I can. Thank you for watching this video. If you have, see you in the next section where we are going to build the awesome websites. I'm going to teach you how to code each and everything in these five websites.